Now can you all hear me? Is it fine now? Everyone comfortable? Good evening Chandni. Yes? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I was uh, telling you all here is that what is the purpose of sitting together and studying now here itself? is for quick rapid pad revision right we expect ki you have studied well and we are now revising just before the exam so all the best let's try to revise maximum things possible all those important points we have put together in these 101 liners right okay so shall we start yeah thank you amit okay very nice so nice name shining medicos so let's start with this. We'll start with the first point. So number one, lenticular opacity which diminishes the vision most. We all know as PSC, right? Now, very important, what are the other things around PSC that you have to learn? Let's quickly revise this. First of all, this is the most common complicated cataract. And everybody knows what is PSC, right? Okay, then this is also the most common radiational cataract. We are all already learning it causes maximum diminution of vision. Can you all let me know why it causes maximum diminution of vision? Because it is near the because it is near the nodal point of the eye. Okay, nodal point of eye. That is why it causes maximum diminution of vision. You have to remember this. Lot of questions here. Right? You all remember what is the nodal point, right? Very quickly, let me explain it to you. Yade sabko that when the light rays are falling on the cornea, they are bent at the cornea, bent at the lens, and first they are focused at a point just behind the lens. Here the light rays are going to cross, image is going to get inverted, and this inverted image falls on the retina. It is your brain which will make it straight. So, isiko, this is what is your nodal point, the optical center or the first focal point of your eye is the nodal point. So, PSC is just very near to the nodal point and that is why it causes maximum diminution of vision, right? So, we will remember this. What are the other things? I am not going to go to the next liner. First of all, we will discuss maximum around this first. So, another important thing when we talk about PSC in subcapsular cataract, we also know about, we should know about ASC, anterior subcapsular, isn't it? Kaha kaha pucha jayega? First of all, if you remember, we learned about toxic cataract. Toxic cataract mein kya padha tha? That in toxic cataracts, BSC causes PSC. So, this is another point to remember. Please all of you, keep your copy and pen ready and keep noting it down. Even if you know everything, please write it down. It is going to help you in your, again, a last minute glance. Okay, please do that. So, BSC is nothing but busulfan, steroid and chloroquine. So, these drugs, busulfan, steroids and chloroquine, we have learned causes posterior subcapsular cataract. Rest, what are the other drugs like amiodarone, right? What else we know for toxic cataract? Phenothiazines. Or kya pada hai? What else we have learned is gold. All these are going to lead to anterior subcapsular cataract. Okay? So we'll revise all this. Yes, very good. Okay. Next important thing. So let me ask you all. Only listening won't help. Hai na? Okay, what else have you learnt about ASC? Where else have you learnt about anterior subcapsular shield cataract? All of you answer me, where do you get shield cataract? Fata fat batao. Where do we get shield cataract? Chalo, chalo, fata fat. I'm waiting for the answer. Shield cataract. And another you are going to also learn about. Yes, very good Chandni, it is atopic dermatitis. We will remember this. This is what? It is a atopic dermatitis is what? It's a presenile cataract. Okay, all of you, what is the name of the other presenile cataract? Other presenile cataract. Name of the other presenile cataract, all of you. Chalo, batao. One is atopic. Second, you can say diabetes. What is the next very important presenile? No, Prashant, this is INICT revision for INICT. 
यस यस डायबिटिक आई सेड एनीथिंग एल्स ओके डायबिटीज में लाइटस हो गया एटोपिक डायबिटाइटिस द नेक्स्ट विच यू हैव टू लर्न इज माओटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी ओके माओटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी सो माओटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कैटरैक्ट आई थिंक एवरीबॉडी कैन आंसर दिस माओटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी व्हाट टाइप ऑफ कैटरैक्ट यस वेरी गुड so myotonic dystrophy we will learn as christmas tree cataract very nice so this much you will know isn't it so galactosemia is generally learnt as metabolic cataract or a congenital cataract all of you and what was the cataract in galactosemia if you have mentioned kushal so galactosemia mein you will learn oil droplet cataract very good we come to the i think now we have covered maximum points around this and we should also um, yeah so i think we can go to the next liner now number 2 the first sign of optic nerve disease is rapd okay so what is relative apparent pupillary defect it is also called marcus gun this is a name of a person marcus gun pupil isn't it this is marcus gun pupil kya hota hai what is rapd everybody knows this so very quickly revising with you all it is the first sign of optic nerve disease why do you call it relative because we are checking the light reflex of the other eye so if if this is a patient in front of me and this is a torch light i am putting the torch in one eye i get a constriction it is normal here again constriction this is normal so now i compare again and again so again constriction 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 dilatation with a direct light getting a dilatation it's absolutely not normal isn't it so how could i catch hold of this only when i compared with other eye therefore we call it relative apparent pupillary defect okay the next question they will ask you the test which i just described what is this test known as what is this test known as swinging flashlight test very good so we will remember this this is another exam question i'm only going to focus today on what are the questions they have asked you okay so swinging flashlight test another question when you're talking about the signs of optic nerve disease we all we know that any optic neuritis can be a papillitis retrobulbar neuritis or neuroretinitis what is the other feature to catch hold of retrobulbar neuritis one is rapd other feature to catch hold which will help me to diagnose the retrobulbar neuritis is pain on eye elevation again i am mentioning this because this has been your exam question so pain on eye elevation why do you get it i hope you all remember if this is the orbit eyeball optic nerve so what happens the superior rectus fibers originating from the zen are inserted on the eyeball some fibers are attached to the myelin sheath of the optic nerve and this is a normal anatomy and because it is attached to the myelin sheath therefore if there is neuritis and if you ask the patient to look up it will pull on the nerve and patient has pain so this is your exam question again pain on eye elevation is due to superior rectus fibers we will not forget this right so first sign of optic nerve disease it is rapd and another thing which helps for diagnosis is pain on eye elevation right okay this is about the second point very good very good good majid please carry on you are most welcome to attend and thank you so the type we come to the third one the type of astigmatism in a patient using the spectacle prescription now i want all of you to work it out and let me know please the type of astigmatism in a patient using the spectacle prescription of minus 6 plus 2 at 90 what do you want what should be remember here axis is mentioned opposite if i'm going to turn this into retinoscopic reading how do i do that minus 6 here minus 6 here plus 2 cylinder at 90 means i should not put it at 90 it will be at 180 so plus 2 is here isn't it so plus 2 at 180 hai na because it's written 90 axis is mentioned opposite so ab kya ho gaya what is the retinoscopic reading it is minus 6 and minus 4 what is the type of astigmatism i am waiting for the answer okay very good it is compound myopic is it with the rule or against the rule narsimha has already answered it is with the rule i hope you remember when par is more in the vertical it is with the rule when it is more in the horizontal it is against the rule so here what will be the answer 
इट इज कंपाउंड मायोपिक विद द रूल यही लिखा है ना मैंने ओके सो बिकॉज दिस आई ऑलरेडी गिवन यू आई वॉन्ट यू ऑल टू सॉल्व दिस वन फॉर मी सो दिस इज वॉट टाइप ऑफ एस्टिगमैटिज्म यू हैव टू आंसर फॉर बोथ अकॉर्डिंग टू फर्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड सेकेंड टेल मी सो दिस एंड दिस इफ यू आंसर दिस आई गो टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट सो वट टाइप ऑफ एस्टिगमैटिज्म इज दिस So this is your question number two. You are answering here. Quickly tell me what type of astigmatism is this. So these are the two classifications of astigmatism which are most frequently asked. You already have learned astigmatism in classification with me. Okay. Yes. So very nice. This is simple hypermetropic against the rule. Why against the rule? Zero means sixty diopters power, but plus two means sixty minus two. You all know hypermetropia means less power. therefore this becomes lesser this horizontal becomes more so it becomes against the rule simple hai na it's very easy okay we come to the next one csr occurs due to breaking of outer blood retinal barrier are we clear about this now i'm very quickly going to draw this for you all so that you are absolutely clear if you look at the rays of the retina outermost is the retinal pigment epithelium theek then there is a gap this is your sub retinal space and after this gap there comes every line is a layer okay so this is a layer of rods and cones then comes your external limiting membrane then comes your outer nuclear outer plexiform then comes your inner nuclear inner plexiform then batao ganglion cell layer then nerve fiber layer and finally internal limiting membrane these are the 10 layers what comes next it comes condensed part of the vitreous this is what is hyaloid membrane posterior and anterior hyaloid membrane and this is the anterior segment of the eye and here is the lens right so this becomes the vitreous and outside the retina this is your choroid so simple depiction let's make ophthalmology simple right and this innermost layer of the choroid the membrane between retina and choroid this is what is your brooks membrane of course i know you all know this you are already prepared for the exam but very quick revision here we what what do you have to understand what is outer blood retinal barrier what is inner blood retinal outer is small adhesion of retinal pigment strong adhesions between the retinal pigment epithelium isn't it and what is inner inner is the capillary integrity where are the capillaries capillaries are at the op and in layer where they are perpendicular to the surface of retina op and in kya ho gaya outer plexiform inner nuclei hai na and then along the nerve fiber layer they are parallel yes very good chandni so you are describing and telling me about the fluorescein angiographic pattern you first told me about ink blot what is the next tell me to kya padha humne so this is when there is any increase of capillary permeability it is the inner barrier which is broken so inner blood retinal barrier or outer kya hota hai strong adhesion of retinal pigment epithelium is outer blood retinal barrier clear so any problem in the outer barrier causing collection of the fluid here mild collection at the subretinal space is what is causing shallow retinal detachment which is csr ho okay? gaya so csr is due to breaking of outer barrier what about inner barrier breaking means increase capillary permeability leakage jab leakage ho raha hai to kya hoga edema so inner barrier means cme we are talking about cystoid macular edema we will not forget this okay so this is what you have to learn right okay we come to the next so next we talk about is listen to it very carefully that in an outward deviated eye action of elevation and depression is of rectile is it clear to this for to everyone do we all remember the action of the muscles I expect that you all have learned that very well we learn it as horizontal or vertical muscles you can just check with the original or my previous sessions if you want to revise that now coming to when you say outward deviated i think this is very clear the eye which is outward deviated the action of elevation and depression is of recti and what is the reason behind it what is the reason because once the eye is outward deviated the recti will come in same line as the visual axis isn't it so it's there is always some reason and when the eye is 51 degrees abducted to 23 degree abducted or 51 degrees adducted when it is adducted now the obliques are in line with the visual axis and therefore the action of elevation or depression is of oblique 
So if you are clear with this concept, you will be absolutely very clear about the yoke muscles where you know this diagram so well, isn't it? So if this is the right side, I'm talking about this becomes the dextro version. So what is the, in the dextro version, what are the muscles which are working? It is right lateral, left medial, isn't it? So, okay, we have to make both the eyes in order to, so we will not forget this. Very simple. This is right, this is left. So if I'm looking to the right side, what are the muscles? Right lateral rectus and left medial rectus, this one, isn't it? And if I'm going to the, I'm looking at the right, it is just the opposite. We know this. So when I'm looking at the dextro elevation, what is this gaze called? Dextro elevation. I'm looking up and towards the right. So if there is a dextro elevation, which will be the uh, muscle elevate, which muscles elevate? We have to think like this. The superior rectus, inferior oblique. Recti will work in outward deviated eye, isn't it? So if recti is going to work in an outward deviated eye, I should write here right superior rectus and the other muscle working will be left inferior oblique. So I can show it in one diagram as well. Is it clear to everyone? ND for flower petal pattern you have told for? Yes, CME you get a flower petal pattern, very nice. And CSR we get smokestack as well as ink blot. Yeah. So now you are clear with this? Okay. So what are the muscles? So they have asked you, the, what is the question asked? If we talk about a question oriented discussion here, what are the muscles working in chalo, levo depression? If you have to think of levo depression, you have to again think of what are the muscles which depress? The muscles which depress are inferior rectus, right? And superior oblique. Levo means left eye is outward. Outward deviated me kya kaam karega? Recti karega. So if it is left eye is outward, it is left inferior rectus, right superior oblique. So this way you can answer the questions very easily. Yoke muscle is very, very important and asked. Okay. And what is herring law? Everybody knows there is equal innovation in yoke muscle. Don't forget that. Okay. Yes. We come to the next. Okay. Which is the condition you are preparing for INSCT? Which is the condition which does not obey herring's law? Remember DVD. I have given one pointer there for DVD as dissociated vertical divergence. DVD, where do you see DVD? Infantile esotropia. Let's not forget this, okay? So DVD is dissociated vertical divergence and it is a feature of infantile esotropia, right? So infantile esotropia. So what is DVD? And the patient has esotropia. You cover one eye. When you are covering one eye, the fusion reflex is disturbed. Now what happens? One eye goes up and out. And then comes back, up and out and comes back. How can this happen? One is not moving, one is moving. That means it is not obeying Herring's law. Okay? So this is what is dissociated. This was your question. Okay? I am only talking about questions and questions today. So it will not obey Herring's law. Okay? This is also your exam question. Which, which is the condition which does not obey Sherrington's law? Do you all remember what is Sherrington's law? Good evening, MY. So what is Sherrington's law, all of you? There is equal but reciprocal innervation in agonist and antagonist. Eki aanki do muscles jinke opposite action hai. So if there is agonist and antagonist, there is a reciprocal innervation. That is what is, isn't understood here? Equal but opposite. If one is plus three, other will be minus three. So suppose I'm looking up. So if plus innervation is going to my superior rectus, the same degree minus will go my, to my inferior rectus. Isn't it? So agonist becomes superior rectus, antagonist is inferior rectus. But if, I, if I'm looking down, now it will be opposite. It will be plus 3 in the in, in inferior rectus and plus minus 3 in superior rectus. I hope you got it. So, Sherrington's log says that there is equal but opposite innervation. Which situation or condition does you do is not obeying Sherrington's law? Just remember Duane's retraction syndrome. Okay? Duane's retraction syndrome has also been your exam question. Very quick revision here. Batao kya hota hai? Defective development of the sixth nerve nucleus because of which the innervation of lateral rectus is, is through the third nerve. Therefore, whenever the patient attempts to adduct, there is retraction of the globe inside. This is what is called Duane's retraction syndrome. Theke? So, it does not obey Sherrington's law. Chalo, if I keep speaking, I will keep sleeping endlessly. Na? So, we have to stop somewhere. We will go to the next pointer.
अदरवाइज आई कीप स्पीकिंग ऑन द टॉप चलो नेक्स्ट स्टेप बताओ नंबर सिक्स नॉर्मल डायरनल वेरिएशन ऑफ इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर इज इक्वल और लेस दैन फाइव एम एम एच जी एवरीबडी नोज दिस वॉट इज द नॉर्मल डायरेक्शन इट इज ऑलवेज लेस दैन इक्वल टू फाइव एम एम इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर करेक्ट ओके क्वेश्चन वेर इज दिस वेन इट इज मोर वेन इट इज लेस सो यू विल लर्न इट इज एम फॉर एम इट इज ऑलवेज मोर इन द मॉर्निंग वाई इज योर इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर मोर इन द मॉर्निंग वी ऑल नो बिकॉज स्टीरोड लेवल्स आर मोर इन द मॉर्निंग दे आर मोर इन द मॉर्निंग ठीक है ओके आई यू ऑल ओके कमन कमन आंसर मी वॉट इज द नॉर्मल इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर एवरीबडी नोज इट इज टेन टू ट्वेंटी वन एम एम एच जी देन वॉट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दे हैव आस्ड यू अराउंड द इंट्रोकुलर प्रेशर इज अबाउट एंड ओके कैन यू टेल मी इफ इट इज लेस देन फाइव और इक्वल टू लेस देन फाइव इज नॉर्मल फाइव टू एट इट इज अ सस्पेक्ट ग्लोकोमा सस्पेक्ट मोर देन एट ऑफ डायरनल वेरिएशन मीन्स दिस डेफिनेटली दिस पेशेंट हैव क्लॉक ठीक है and you should also be knowing what is ntg it is normal tension glaucoma where the intraocular pressure is normal but there are fundus changes also so there is damage therefore you are getting the cupping also there are field defects also but yes intraocular pressure is normal theek hai na this is what is normal tension glaucoma so why it is happening why is the damage in the in, in the nerve i hope you all remember the vascular theory this is explained by vascular theory that it is the blood supply to the optic nerve which is that is why we never define glaucoma as increase intraocular pressure that is wrong glaucoma is just optic neuropathy which is multifactorial optic neuropathy theek hai na okay so ye ho gaya aapka and what is the opposite of ntg ye bhi discuss kar lo it is ocular hypertension where now the pressures are more here the pressure was normal here the pressures here pressures are more but there is no damage means rest everything no fundus changes and no field defect so that is normal fundus is normal and no visual field defect okay we can't move without answering this question what is the first visual field defect in primary open angle glaucoma good 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 people keep replying batao 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 this is not pg level you have to know about ocular hypertension normal tension glaucoma it is strictly your level which was exam which is asked in the exam right so you see we are all unique and we will we, we, are, we will always be unique nobody can be like anyone so you will have to appreciate each other's uniqueness theek hai try to enjoy the session and focus and just self assess yourself what you know what you don't know and try to write the notes chalo so we talk about what is the first field effect yeah in so kushal if you answer me should i really be happy with this you have to tell me germs area theek hai na so it is paracentral scotoma in the germs area so germs it is paracentral scotoma in not germs scotoma germ scotoma is supi arcuate scotoma i am saying germs area mein paracentral scotoma so this is very important can you all tell me what was germs area it was corresponding to arcuate fibers hai na so germs area is because the first damage in glaucoma is occurring where arcuate fibers i think i have given a line on this about this also right okay so that is why corresponding to arcuate fibers the area where the first scotoma appears is germs and next question they can ask you here for visual field is which island of vision stays till last so aap kya bologe which island of vision stays till last इट इज टेम्पोरल आईलैंड ठीक है सब कुछ चला जाता है जस्ट बिफोर ब्लाइंडनेस इट इज द टेम्पोरल आईलैंड ऑफ विजन टेम्पोरल आईलैंड ऑफ विजन स्टे स्टिल सो दीज आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ऑन विच एंड अराउंड विच द क्वेश्चन आर आज दे कैन बी अ पार्ट ऑफ योर ऑप्शन वी हैव टू रिवाइज इट चलो नेक्स्ट पे चलते हैं लेट सी वॉट वी हैव नाउ द एंगल सप्टेंडेड बाई एनी लेटर ऑन द स्नेल एंड स्टार्ट एट द नोडल पॉइंट ऑफ द पेशेंट आई इज फाइव मिनट्स सीरियसली every letter what is different then distance isn't it so in stellar box if it is 6 by 6 this 5 minute is subtended at 6 minutes uh, sorry 6 meters but if if you are looking at a line of 6 by 12 now it is subtended the same 5 minutes so what is different is the distance from which it is subtended keep in mind but otherwise we always learn like this it is always 5 minutes 
Now, this is your INICT question that if 6 by 60 line, I think I've revised it so many times in a previous session also. Let's do it again that if it is a 6 by 60 line, we are just learning at 60 meter, it is subtending angle of 5 minutes. Now, you are asking what is the angle subtended from 6 meters. Okay? This is the question. So, how will you answer? It is very simple. You calculate the minimum angle of resolution as 60 by 6, which is equal to, you always reverse the fraction, you get minimum angle of resolution. So, here it is 10 minutes. Now, for overall letter, we always multiply by 5. So, we multiply by 5, which is equal to 50 minutes. Right? So, okay. Any more instruction, please, Zanik? Yes, sir, please tell me. So, so, this is your way you are going to answer. Okay? Okay. I think this is, yes, this was the question asked around this. We can come to the next one. NLD opens in the inferior meters of nose. This was your one question. Then the next they asked you where, anteriorly or posteriorly. So, we will remember this, that it opens anteriorly. Okay, another question on anatomy is when you closing that, what is the alignment of your upper and lower puncta? So, upper puncta is medial to lower puncta. Next question. Next question says, what is the length of NLD? NLD can be anything around 18 millimeters. Okay, it can vary from 17 to 18 millimeters. So, different sources will have some different uh, values written. We will learn around 18 millimeters. Right? Of course, Another question on this chapter, if you want to remember, is which is the best investigation to find out your uh, functional block? That is your lacrimal pump failure functional block. We will answer. It is generally two, two are there, no? Jones dye test and dacrocentilography. So we will always answer that the investigation of choice becomes your dacrocentilography for functional blocks. Okay. So this is another question. Then another question for you from this chapter is, what is the most common etiological factor for the dacrocystitis? So most common etiological factor for acute and chronic for both, we will learn staph aureus. So this is for both acute and chronic. Staph aureus for both acute and chronic. Okay? Okay, what is the next question is, what is the sequelae of, what is the sequelae of acute dacrocystitis? So, sequelae you will hear answer is fistula. It is lacrimal fistula. Where is the fistula opening? On the skin. And how will you treat? This is another question. What? How will you treat lacrimal fistula? What will you answer? How will you treat lacrimal fistula? So, lacrimal fistula, you will say, not don't answer fistula like me. Your answer will be DCR. Where do you make the opening in the DCR? Next question. You will answer it is middle meatus. Right? Okay. Another question is when does the uh, tear production start in a child? So, do we mean to say that it takes time for a tear production to start? Till then there is a dry eye? No. We are talking about reflex production. Basal is always there. Reflex means while the child is crying when is the tear produced, you will answer around 6 weeks. So, we are talking about this reflex tear production. This starts around 6 weeks. Okay, in a child, this starts around six weeks. Okay, then we talk about this is next thing. Come to the next point now. So these, these those were the some important questions. We come to the next one. So Calaisian is a this was asked twice in your AIMS exam. So that's why I've taken this. All those questions which have been asked, especially in this exam. And this, this is chronic lipogranulomatous inflammation of vibomian gland. What is another question that is uh, your asked here is if a patient has recurrent collision, what should be the most common cause? If they ask you what should you suspect, the question was not about most common cause, but if I ask you most common cause, it is uncorrected and mild refractive error. So if you need specs, but they are mild number, you can manage without it, what will happen? You won't wear it. If you won't wear it, you keep rubbing your eyes to see clearly, you don't even realize that, and you get repeated inflammations all the time. Right? <coughs> therefore, therefore, you, what you have to remember that for recurrent collision, though the most common is uncorrected mild refractive error, but the question was on different carcinomas. So, if they ask you 
that what are the what will you suspect it's common sense meibomium is a sebaceous gland so what we suspect is sebaceous cell carcinoma so this was your exam question do you know what is the most common site of sebaceous cell carcinoma most common site here would be upper lid they have asked you what is the most common malignant tumor of lids now what will you answer basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma what is the most common site if they ask you you should answer it is lower lid okay so this was some quick revision around this and of course calaisonin is not called hordeolum internum i hope you are clear with this hordeolum internum is acute inflammation of meibomian gland and calaisonin is a chronic lipogranulomatous inflammation of meibomian gland how do you treat acute you give antibiotics anti inflammatories for calaisonin you do incision and okay this was your question incision and drainage or incision and or curettage so you should answer incision and curettage ठीक है, so your answer incision and curettage. ठीक है, okay, for treatment of calaisonin. So these are some questions around this topic. And what is hordeolum externum? Hordeolum externum is tight. Okay, all of you will answer, and I will not wait for the answer according to Prezenik. I know that I am also learning things from him, so I am not waiting. But please answer this. What is the meaning of hordeolum? I will answer after I get your answers. Okay, what is the meaning of hordeolum? All of you will answer this. I am coming to the next point. Shifting fluid is a feature of exudative RD. Is it correct? Yes, है ना? Very important point. Shifting fluid is a important feature of exudative RD. Now, very quickly, let's revise what were the types of RD. We will talk about regmatogenous RD. Quickly revise this. Then we talk about tractional retinal detachment. We talk about exudative retinal detachment now what are the questions they have asked you i cannot go into too many details but very quickly exudative you have just we are learning shifting fluid very very important if you see my previous sessions i have shown you a usg b scan where we can appreciate the different position of retina due to the shifting fluid please have a look at it then we talk about what is the configuration it is convex isn't it it is convex and of course there is no photopsia here there will be no photopsia because photopsia is due to mainly traction of rods and cones then we talk about is your tractional retinal detachment it will be naturally there you can see the traction bands and therefore it will be more concave and then immobile type of retinal detachment whereas regmatogenous is undulating and corrugated thoda thoda motility hai that is undulating with a corrugated appearance now very very important question here is shaffer sign they have asked you this what is shaffer sign i hope you all remember it is also called tobacco dust shaffer sign ko kya bolate hain tobacco dust what is this lot of pigment dispersion in the vitreous theek hai and this is a show sign that there is a retinal break तो अगर आपको ये आप इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू फाइंड द रेटनल ब्रेक आफ्टर डूइंग अ लॉट ऑफ इनडायरेक्ट ऑफ एनोस्कोपी बट देर इज पिगमेंट डिस्पर्शन एंड शाफर साइन इज पॉजिटिव वर्क हार्ड देर इज डेफिनेटली अ ब्रेक ओके सो दिस इज अ क्यू शिफ्टिंग फ्लूड इज अ क्यू जस्ट रिमेंबर इन रेगमेटोजिनस आई एम गोइंग टू गेट फ्लोटर्स एंड फोटोपसिया राइट बट नो फ्लोटर्स फॉर ट्रैक्शनल एंड नो फोटोपसिया फॉर एक्सुडेटिव ओके what are floaters we all know it is opacities in the vitreous cavity see what is the problem i did not get any answer for what is a hordeolum i will forget my own question so hordeolum is nothing but swelling okay hordeolum ka matlab hota hai swelling when it is on the external lid margin we are calling it externum when it is an internal it is internum okay ab padhte hain this one dark choroid sign is a feature of stargardt disease so where do you get this sign fundus fluorescein angiography why do you get this sign this is because of this dark choroid sign is also called silent choroid hota kya hai when you are doing a fluorescein angiography i have shown you in the, in the images part how the background choroid looks all dark isn't it there is no fluorescence there so that is what is dark choroid sign why it is happening because of the dense deposition of lipofuscin dense deposition of lipofuscin theek hai and another important point for stargardt 
What you get on the fundus is beaten bronze appearance. We will not forget beaten bronze appearance. Okay, it is one of the most common macular dystrophies. Correct? Okay. Yes. Then another important point that you should remember, you should not give vitamin A in Stargardt's disease because it promotes lipofishness. And which is the other dystrophy you have learned very quickly? Best vitelliform dystrophy. Best vitelliform dystrophy. Now all of you, we will quickly revise question wise. Egg yolk appearance, right? This is one thing they have asked you. After some time, the vision will drop to 6 by 60, but at the later stage. And of course, this is very childhood disease only. You know? It is autosomal dominant childhood disease. And yes, what they have asked you is about electrooculogram. We all know electrooculogram is depicted by light peak, peak of the potential in the light upon dark trough. So, light peak upon dark trough. So, this light peak upon dark trough is what is called Arden ratio. But I know this has been your AIMS question only. Your INICT question, okay. This Arden ratio, what is the normal value of Arden ratio? We will learn it is more than equal to 1.85 is normal. I have again mentioned in my previous sessions as well. So, this is the exam question in best disease. This goes to less than 1.5. And when do you call it as a flat EOG? When do we call it as a flat EOG? Flat EOG ka bolte? When it is? less than 1.25 very good thank you for keep answering i should also know that you all are there attentive huh? so this is very important to remember yes so all of you please understand this stargas disease or these are all rp dystrophies retinal pigment epithelium is involved whenever retinal pigment epithelium will be involved the investigation of choice dr joy will be electrooculogram yes right okay we come to the next point a lesion in the right temporal lobe will affect the upper temporal quadrant of left eye. Right temporal lobe lesion. Everybody revise with me. When temporal lobe lesion is there, what happens? It is pi in sky because inferior fibers are gone. So, pi in sky of the left side because there is a right temporal lobe lesion, I have to make a left sided pi in sky. So, if I make a left sided pi in sky, this is what it is. This is left eye, this is right eye. The left sided pine sky is involved, left eye ka kya involved ho gaya? Upper temporal. If I had written right eye, then it would have been upper nasal. Okay. So, this is how we will remember. Right. So, optic radiation lesions and what and had it been a parietal lobe lesion? Everybody knows parietal lobe lesion will lead to pie in floor. So, if I say it was a left parietal lobe lesion. Suppose I write left parietal lobe lesion, then what would be the field effect? This is left side, this is right side. It would be right sided. It would be right sided pi in floor. This is right sided pi in floor. Okay. So, what quadrant of right eye is involved? It is lower temporal. Left eye, lower nasal. So, now I think you are clear with this. Okay, we come to the next point. Crackmer spots are subepithelial. Kaan pada tha Crackmer spots? These are signs of graft rejection in patients of keratoplasty. So, these are signs of graft rejection. So, it is subepithelial. What are the other signs of graft rejection that you know? One is Khodadose line. What is Khodadose line? This is endothelial graft rejection. This was your exam question, all of you. Theke? Endothelial graft rejection is Khodadose. Okay, then what is your next we should know is case dot kya hote hai? So, case dot is your epithelial. It is epithelial graft rejection. So, you get all these immune cells, the collection of immune cells in form of a line indicating the reduction of that layer. Okay, few more questions on keratoplasty. Which should, what should be the number, minimum number of endothelial cells in a corneal graft? It should be at least 2000 cells per millimeter square for corneal graft. 1500 chal jayega, but we will prefer to answer 2000. Okay, what is normal? Normal of course is 3500 to 5500 in children. In adults, you can say it is around 2500 to 35 or 3000. Different sources say differently. 
anyway but we'll remember this and another question is which is the most common infection after keratoplasty if i'm talking about so most common infection after keratoplasty you will answer is staph epidermidis we will answer staph epidermidis yeah yes correctly answered very good chalo we come to the next point anti glaucoma contraindicated in, in infants is trimonidine correct okay few more questions on anti glaucoma all of you which anti glaucoma can be given in pregnancy you will answer can be given in pregnancy again trimonidine remember which anti glaucoma causes drowsiness again answer is trimonidine because it causes drowsiness that's why it's not given in infants it will lead to cerebral depression theek hai then another question Which anti-glaucoma can cause lid retraction? You should answer aproclonidine. Which anti-glaucoma can cause hypertrichosis? That is excessive hairs, eyelashes. You see, the number of eyelashes have increased. Hypertrichosis. Yes, it is prostaglandin analogs. Which anti-glaucoma can cause heterochromia iridis? Now, what will you answer? Heterochromia iridis. latanoprost it causes iris pigmentation and what about conjunctival pigmentation epinephrine conjunctival pigmentation by epinephrine remember this theek hai which anti glaucoma are contraindicated in uveitis all of you contraindicated in uveitis you will answer pilocarpine and prostaglandin analog okay and then what is the topical and ca inhibitor we all know it is brinzolamide and dorzolamide brinzolamide and dorzolamide very good very good keep answering yes theek okay? hai so these are some very important okay what is the mechanism of action for pilocarpine you will say it increases the trabecular outflow which other drug can increase trabecular outflow apart from pilocarpine rest the other drugs increase uvo sclera okay prostaglandin analogs alpha agonists they all increase the uvo sclera outflow trabecular outflow ek pilocarpine second the new drug that is ropressa that is what is nitarsodel please remember this nitarsodel so this was a quick revision around this point we come to the next one Okay, so now I think the speed is good, huh? Mesos phenomenon is a feature of Auguchi's disease. Do you all know what is mesos phenomenon? It is also called mesos Nakamura phenomenon. क्या होता है Auguchi's disease? Simple याद कर लो. Auguchi's disease is congenital stationary night blindness with pale fundus. So when you say congenital stationary night blindness means it is not progressive. It is stationary night blindness with pale fundus means fundus doesn't look red it looks yellowish chalo yaad ho gaya now what happens of course there is now if you ask this patient to sit in dark for 1 hour ek ghanta andhere mein bitha do for 1 hour in dark what happens reverses everything reverses that means no night blindness and fundus is not this is what is called mesu this was again your aims question i n i c t theek hai that's why i have taken this so this is what is called mesos phenomenon why it is happening see number of rods are less in this patient but there is over stimulation of rod so the cause is over stimulation of rod then okay so come to the next point perfect surgery is related to terigium this was again a very very important question and you should know this everybody knows what is perfect surgery this is your terigium extended resection followed by extended conjunctival transplantation isn't it so we all know what is the what are the questions around terigium one by one first let us take perfect surgery which is the best method to prevent recurrence in terigium it is always autografting now when we go for an extended autografting right if suppose this was your eye and we what you are doing is you are cutting the graft here you and if you have removed this terigium here you are just stitching the graft here this is what is autografting 
Now what you do is, you are creating a larger barrier area and you are stitching a larger graft. This is what is called, it is seen that recurrence is almost zero now. Okay? So, overextended form of autografting is what is called pterygium extended resection followed by extended conjunctival transplantation. Correct? Okay, once we know this, next question for you all. Pterygium is inflammatory or connective tissue disorder? Sabko pata it is a connective tissue disorder, isn't it? Next question. What is the main etiology? You will answer, it is ultraviolet B, UVB rays. Pterygium is more common, more common nasally. Remember. Right? How do you differentiate it from pseudo pterygium? Next question. By glass rod test. If glass rod is passing easily, then it is pseudo pterygium. No confusion, please. And if it is, does not pass, then it is pterygium. If it does not pass, then we write it as pterygium. Okay? So, all these important points around pterygium have been asked in your exam. Chalo, next. The critical angle of cornea air interface is 46 degrees was your very important again INICT question. So, you all know what is critical angle. Very quickly revise. So, what is critical angle? So, that angle of incidence where the refract angle of refraction is 90 degree. When the light ray is passing from denser media to lighter media. Okay, usi ko kehte critical angle. Any angle of incidence more than critical angle means there will be no refraction but total internal reflection. So, this is all we are talking about the principle of gonioscopy. So, what happens? Why can't you see the angle structures through slit lamp? Because of total internal reflection in the angle. But when you put a gonio lens, what will happen? When you put the gonio lens, now you have made that medium denser. Okay, so because the refractive index is now more, it is not only air, air ka to one hai. Because you have increased the refractive index of this medium, there will be no total internal reflection. Okay, one or two questions more, gonioscopy, they have also asked you which investigator, the investigation does not require dilatation of pupil, so does not require dilatation. 70% recurring chance and kya cheez ke liye? 70% recurring chance. It is generally for if you go for a bare sclera technique in a pterygium, it is uh, documented around 37% of recurrence. Okay. And if you are doing this autografting of perfect surgery, this recurrence becomes 0.01%. I did not complicate your life. I just said around 0%. But exact is 0.01%. Right, Andy? Yeah. Okay. So, gonioscopy is does not require dilatation. Okay, we come to the next one. Hyperleon is a complication of RD surgery. We all know what is hyperleon in retinal detachment surgery. You use a vitreous substitute. What is that? Silicon oil. So, when you are using a silicon oil, it can actually leak into the anterior chamber. When it leaks into the anterior chamber, oil is lighter than water. It will collect here. So, this is what is called inverse hypopion. Normally, hypopion is below. This is inverse hypopion or you can say hyperleon. Right? Okay. So, it is a feature of RD surgery. We will not forget this. This was also your, this exam question. Asked in this exam. Okay? I and ICT. Then, so hyperleon and it, what they had asked you was inverse hypopion. So, this is what is called inverse hypopion. Okay, once you are uh, talking about inverse hypopion, are you all in a mood to answer me a little bit more here? What is, where do you get recurrent hypopion, all of you? Where do we get recurrent hypopion? Anyone? I will wait for the answer. Okay, I will not wait for the answer, but you please answer. I will go to the next point. So, recurrent hypopion, kaha milta hai, all of you? We come to the next question. Very good, Ame. This is Behshad's disease. Nice. So, we see recurrent hypopion in Behshad's disease. And recurrent vitreous hemorrhage, where do you get? And where do you get pseudo hypopion, all of you? Pseudo hypopion? Ye bhi bata do. Pseudo hypopion? 
Very good. You all are answering nicely. We come to the next. Retinal magnification of the eye. It is generally fixed. No? It is considered due to the fibrosis MA. It is generally a fixed hypopion. We don't need to. You have to just treat the fungal infection. It is going to be reabsorbed. And it will be fine. Okay. So we don't do that. So it's generally a fixed hypopion. We, we commonly don't drain. It will go off by itself. You just treat the cause. Okay. Yeah. Then we talk about pseudo hypopion. You all have not answered me yet. Pseudo hypopion, it is seen in tumors, na? retinoblastoma. They are not tumor cells, they are, they are not pus cells, they are tumor cells. Then you call it pseudo hypopion. Remember? So it can be a feature of retinoblastoma. Okay, we come to the next one retinal magnification of eye with refractive power of plus 5 when viewed from 20 in indirect ophthalmoscopy. How do you calculate the magnification of indirect ophthalmoscopy? How do we calculate power of eye upon power of lens? Isn't it? Power of eye upon power of lens. So this is what we have done here. What is the power of eye here? All of you. This is what you have to understand. Plus 5D. What is the power of the eye? Plus 5D. Plus 5 means it is hypermetropia. If the normal emetropic is 60 diopter, it will be min 55 diopters for this patient. So 55 upon... 20D lens 20. That is why the answer is this. Okay. okay. How do you calculate the, this was for indirect of thalmoscopy. For direct of thalmoscopy, how do you calculate the power magnification? Magnification is power upon 4. For direct, it is power upon 4. Right. Again, you will decide what is the power and divide it by. Okay. We come to the next point. Asteroid hylosis is not associated with myopia. Do you all know what is asteroid hylosis or asteroid bodies? These are floaters, okay, in the vitreous cavity. So these floaters are mainly seen in, okay, a few points. These are mainly calcium and lipids. And it is mainly associated with diabetes, hypertension and high cholesterol. Remember this. And it can also be associated with hypermetropia but not with myopia. This was again your AIMS question. It is not associated with myopia. Okay? Okay. Another important point, it is more common in males, right? And it does not affect vision. Visual acuity is generally normal. These, these, are, these are the points for asteroid bodies or asteroid hyalosis. Okay. Once we know this, another question on floaters, they have asked you is what is synchysis scintillans? So, synchysis scintillans this is mainly cholesterol body. Synchysis scintillans is cholesterol bodies. Right? These are also floaters we should know. Can you all tell me what are musky volitants? All of you? Musky volitants. Ye bata do, hum next point. Pe what are musky volitants? These are again remnant of hyaloid tissue. Okay, they are remnant. Hyaloid tissue kya hai? Primary vitreous. So, it is remnant of hyaloid tissue. What are the other remnants that you have studied? Bugmister papilla, which is near the other remnants. You should know, which has been asked in your exam, all of you. Batao, ek ho gaya, Mittendorf dots. Mittendorf dots are mainly behind the lens. This is again an exam question. And second was Bergmischa papilla. Okay, Bergmischa papilla. This is near the disc. Bergmischa papilla near the disc. Okay, we come to the next point. The most common site of staphyloma is posterior. Everybody knows it is ectatic condition of the eyeball. And most common type of staphyloma we will answer is posterior. Where do you see it? Don't forget pathological myopia. This is, we get it in pathological myopia. Okay? Yes. Anything else that we have to know is about ciliary staphyloma. You can quickly draw this diagram and understand that any staphyloma from the cornea is anterior staphyloma. 
From the angle, it is called intercalary staphyloma. From the ciliary body is ciliary staphyloma, then equatorial staphyloma and finally posterior. Okay. So, this way we learn the different types of staphyloma. Anterior generally pseudoconias, intercalary, peripheral and so Ciliary staphyloma, one important feature is scleritis. And what they have asked you in exam, let me go to the question. It is scleromalacia perforans. Okay. Come to the next. Next is bitot spot is a primary sign of xerophthalmia. So, what are primary and secondary signs of vitamin A deficiency? Secondary signs are those signs which you can see in other conditions as well. So, just you already remember the grading. So, you will just remember XN, XF and XS. XS and XF are secondary signs. So, XN, X, sorry, XN, XS and XF. Here, you know, nictilopia, corneal scarring and white spotted fundus. There can be other causes of this condition. So, these are secondary signs of xerophthalmia. Rest all are primary signs. Right? Why do you get that foamy appearance on the bit dot spot? We will answer it is due to cornibacterium zeros. Okay, next one line. Bacterial infection that resembles fungal. Again, it is your INICT question. Bacterial infection that resembles fungal infection is nocardia. We will not forget this. It is nocardia. Right? So, nocardia is a filamentous bacteria. Just like fungal keratitis, there are satellite nodules here. Okay? And it is, just remember, nocardia is a filamentous, not fungi, but a bacteria. This much is enough to remember. And what you get here is also uh, mainly a rough ulcer and there are satellite nodules. Okay. And what is the most common cause of bacterial keratitis? Of course, you will answer staph aureus, but if they have specified in India, then you should answer staph epidermidis. For India, it will become staph epidermidis. Okay. Okay, next point. Keyhole shaped scotoma. Scotoma. We have learned this in previous sessions. If I talk about keyhole scotoma, it is a feature of lateral geniculate body lesion. Right? So, you will remember this keyhole shaped scotoma. It is a feature of LGB. And when I say keyhole vision, vision, then you will say occipital lobe lesion. We will not forget this. Again, it's a names question only. Occipital lobe lesion. What is keyhole vision? It is when the posterior cerebral artery is blocked, what you get? Macula sparing homonymous hemianopia. So, this macula ko spare karte ve jo homonymous hemianopia that you are getting is what is called keyhole vision. Sometimes both sides are involved, that is also called keyhole vision. So, don't forget this also, right? Okay. We next talk about is Weber syndrome is involvement of third nerve. Yes. So, what is Weber syndrome? It is third nerve palsy with third nerve palsy. Yes, Narsimha, correct. So, this is third nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia. Okay, we will, that means I am telling you that please revise the syndromes. Very quickly, what are the other syndromes that you should know? What is Benedict's? Okay, Benedict's batao, I am not writing. Benedict's is again third nerve palsy with contralateral hemi tremor. And what is your Millard Gubler? Millard Gubler is sixth nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia. It is now sixth nerve palsy with contralateral hemiplegia. Right? And then we talk about next is what is Foster? Important exam question Foster Kennedy syndrome. Right? So, Foster Kennedy syndrome, kya bataoge? This is say the side where there is a problem or the lesion, you will get atrophy, other side. So, it is always ipsilateral optic atrophy and contralateral papilledema. Isn't it? Contralateral papilledema. This is what is Foster Kennedy syndrome. It happens due to frontal lobe tumors and yes, and olfactory group tumors. So, remember these syndromes, they are exam question. Next, this was also your INSTT question, granular dystrophy is chained by. So, you have to revise your corneal dystrophies for this exam. Corneal dystrophy may macular, con con se hote, granular, 
सॉरी स्ट्रोमल वॉट आर द स्ट्रोमल टाइप ग्रैन्युलर मैक्यूलर लैटस है ना सो ग्रैन्युलर इज मेनली द वन वेयर द यू विल लुक वेन यू लुक एट द स्लाइड बिटवीन द लेजन दर इज क्लियर कॉर्निया दिस इज योर ग्रैन्युलर राइट इट इज स्टेन बाय मेसन ट्रैक नाउ लेट्स लर्न फॉर द अदर स्टेन ऑल्सो मैक्यूलर मैक्यूलर डिस्ट्रॉफी वॉट आर द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन it is associated with mucopolysaccharidosis we will not forget this it is the only corneal dystrophy which is autosomal recessive okay and then another question here is it is stained by colloidal iron or alcyon blue right and what about lattice lattice is again type 1 type 2 these are all stromal isn't it type 1 is the most common stromal dystrophy again these are exam questions huh? and what about type 2 type 2 is associated with amyloidosis right so stain by congo red will remember congo red so now you know all the stains that is stain by congo red okay we come to the next next is your least chance of pco occurs with please don't forget this which iul will cause least chance of after cataract it is hydrophobic acrylic hydrophobic acrylic and after cataract okay one more question treatment of choice of after cataract what will you answer treatment of choice of after cataract is ndr posterior capsulotomy isn't it next one right next we have talking about corneal tattooing is done by platinum ye kya hai so if your patient has a corneal scar and you cannot you don't want to go for a keratoplasty it's just a peripheral scar you can color it this is called corneal tattooing now either i can color it golden or black according to the color of his iris if i have to golden means brown brown or black if i have to color it black i use platinum and if i have to color it brown what do i use gold and then i will wash with hydrazine hydrate when i wash with hydrazine hydrate it fixes out there this is how we do corneal tattooing remember that it has been asked next in a superior oblique palsy hypertropia increases with same side head tilt correct so we all know this we have discussed this so many times if there is an so palsy of the right side suppose this is hypertrophic eye so this hypertrophia increases with same side head tilt that is one point which is called bilchowski sign this is what is called bilchowski sign sabko pata hai na that you have learned this just check my previous sessions as well and very important opposites <coughs> sorry <coughs> and very important opposite gaze so it will be same side head tilt and opposite gaze have been explained so many times please revise this point as well okay then we talk about next is galactosemia is a reversible cataract very important again aims question only okay we will not forget this if they ask you which is reversible it is galactosemia so sorry okay Anyway, so another point in galactosemia, हमने क्या पढ़ा था? Oil droplet क्या था? So oils, what are the three oils you should know? One is your oil droplet cataract. When you say droplet cataract, we are talking about galactosemia. But if I say oil droplet reflex, बताओ? Oil droplet reflex. Now, it is a seen in which condition? Reflex. It is keratoconus. oil droplet reflex keratoconus theek hai and oil globule reflex oil globule reflex we will answer is your anterior lenticonus it is anterior lenticonus <coughs> okay next point a wave in erg is due to activity of rod this was also your this exam question 
ठीक है सो वेरी क्विकली इफ दिस इज द ए वेव दिस इज द बी वेव इन अ स्मॉल सी वेव सो वॉट यू हैव टू नो ए रिस्पॉन्स टू रॉड्स एंड कोन्स B for B bipolar cells, okay? Molar cells and bipolar cells. Molar are mainly supporting cell, right? So we remember this. It is bipolar cells. C is a very small activity of retinal pigment epithelium, which we are hardly worried about here. So C is a small activity of retinal pigment epithelium. अच्छा एक और क्वेश्चन है, which is also your AIMS question only, where they have asked you that. Uh, how do you monitor cirrhosis? We go for a serial electroretinogram. I have discussed in the earlier session as well. We will not forget that. Because it affects iron in the eye will affect the B wave. We are mainly looking at the B wave. Yes, very good. Campylobacter naam hi asa rakh liya. Huh? Okay, very good. Chalo, next. What about this one? Vernix hemianopic pupil is a feature of optic tract lesion. Everybody remembers this? We all know what is hemianopic pupil. You are showing the torch light from one direction. You are seeing a normal reaction in both eyes. When you change the direction of the torch light, no reaction in both eyes. So, ek taraf se normal reaction, other side no reaction. This is what is called hemianopic pupil. Why do you say it's a feature of optic tract? I hope you all know this. We have learned it earlier very quickly out here. If this is the, if we are talking about here, this is your lesion of the optic tract of the left side. What will happen? Can you see here? Optic tract means it is containing the temporal fibers of the left and nasal of the right. So both are gone. So when I am putting a torch light from this direction, it falls on these parts of the retina, I get a normal reaction. But when I change the direction of my torch light, now the light is falling on these parts of the retina which are gone. Therefore, no reaction. This is what is Varnix hemianopic pupil. Right? Okay, so we'll not forget this. It's a feature of tract lesion because of one eye temporal, one eye nasal. So one eye temporal, one eye nasal is also in radiation and cortex. All of you, can you reply this? Can you reply this? One eye nasal, one eye temporal. This is your uh, is seen in optic after optic tract also in optic radiation and visual cortex. It's the same pattern. Why are we learning that vernix hemianopic pupil is mainly a feature of tract lesion? I leave it to you. Answer me first. Quickly. Batao. Aisa kyo hai? No, it has not to do with Congress and Congress. Kuch aur socho. No. Okay. Very quickly all of you. I am waiting. Because, because the light reflex pathway doesn't go down from the track, it deviates here to the pretectal nucleus and then goes to Edinga Westphal. This is the reason any lesion in the visual cortex or optic radiations, pupillary reactions are normal. Don't forget that. Okay, now we come to this one. Restrictive myopathy is, a, is diagnosed by... FDT. You agree with this? <laughs> so, we are saying post-duction test. Do you remember what is post-duction test? Okay, very quickly. You have a patient who cannot elevate his eye. There can be two reasons. Either his superior rectus is paralyzed or his inferior rectus is fibrosed. How should I differentiate? Kuch nahi hai. Hold the eye with the forceps. Hold the muscle superior rectus with the forceps. Try to move the eye up with the forceps. Agar forceps se aram se upa chala gaya, if it can go easily with the forceps, it was palsy. But if it is stuck even with the forceps, that means there has to be fibrosis. This is what is called post-duction test. So restrictive means any fibrosis. So we are talking about thyroid eye disease where we have learned this, that there can be defective elevation which should be tested by post-duction test. Okay, talking about myopathy, which is the first muscle to be involved? It is always inferior rectus. Don't forget this diagram. First it is inferior rectus, then medial rectus, superior rectus and lateral rectus. Right? Inferior rectus, medial rectus, superior rectus and lateral rectus. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is a sequence of recti muscle. But if they ask you which is the last muscle to be involved. Now, last muscle you are going to answer is oblique. 
Which oblique you want to choose? In fear oblique. Though it's majority of the sources say just obliques, but you have to, if we have to pick up, we will pick in fear oblique. We already just discussed post-duction test, which is another question. Then they have asked you which part of the muscle. We all have seen last uh, in session, we have seen the images of thyroid myopathy. It is the belly of muscle which is involved. Okay. So all these are very important questions from thyroid myopathy. Chalo, we come to the next one. Salt and pepper is the most common ocular feature of rubella. Correct or not correct? Salt and pepper what? Fundus, of course. So, salt and pepper fundus. What are the ocular features of rubella? We will, any ocular feature you want to learn, make a diagram. What are the ocular features? Think yourself. Outside to end. What, what do you get in the eyeball in rubella? Microphthalmos. Okay. We get microphthalmos, small eye. Okay. What do you get in the cornea? We get rubella keratitis. We get a keratitis. Okay. What do you get in the angle? We can get angle anomaly and glaucoma. Okay. What do you get here? We can get cataract. Right? Which is the most common cataract out here? Most common is, exam question, nuclear pearly cataract. It is nuclear pearly cataract. Clear? And of course, what do you get in the retina? We will answer it as salt and pepper fund. These are the features of rubella. Most common, we tend to answer cataract, but it is not. It is salt and pepper fungus. Second most common will be rubella. Okay. So, what are the other causes of salt and pepper fungus? Salt and pepper fungus, one is rubella, another syphilis, never forget it. Rubella and syphilis, a must to learn. Then you can get it in myotonic dystrophy. Right? Then you can also get it as a variant of retinitis pigmentosa, that is RP sign pigmento. Blue dot cataract is the most common congenital cataract, I mean. Blue dot is most common congenital cataract. Okay. And punctate or dot cataract can also be a feature of Down syndrome. Okay. Then Done. This one is done. We move ahead. Okay. Come to this one. So, the direction of the subluxation in Marfan syndrome is superior temporal. This is my age long almost now. It is more than 25. How do I teach it? See, this is Marfan ka M. Okay. Ye sab ko bata hai. Apne sab senior se pushna. Aur Marfan ke M mein aapne uske head pe arrow laga. Put an arrow on M. What is this direction? Superotemporal. Easy to learn now that in Marfan's the direction is superotemporal. This was asked in your again music. Now what do you do? You make a dotted line like this, 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 this. Make arrows and write an H. So with this diagram we learn two conditions and two directions. H kya hai? Homocystinuria. It in homocystinuria it is your inferonasal. Very good. Yes, very nicely answered, Compello Vector. Kaash asli naam bata paate. Huh? It feels so odd to call anyone Compello Vector. Homocystinuria and Feronasal. Achha, batao, wheel marchesi mein kya hota hai? Downwards and forward. Wheel marchesi is another condition. Downward and forward. Achha, I am again talking about one more exam question. Pay attention on subluxation. What are the other conditions? What are the syndromes you have just learned? Marfan ho gaya, Homocystinuria ho gaya. Wheel march is ho gaya. What else? Jaldi bolo. Ehler Danlos. I am not writing but I am speaking. You can note it down. I expect everyone to obey me and with your copy and pen and they are noting down. Okay. So what I am saying? Ehler Danlos ke baad don't forget hyperlysinemia and sulfite oxidase deficiency. This is again an INICT wala hai. So a sulfite oxidase deficiency. These two are also causes of subluxation of lens. Chalo, next part. The cause of intermittent proptosis is orbital varix. Correct? Eh? So, what else we will learn? Intermittent means sometimes the eye is normal and sometimes not. Eh, no? Sometimes the eye is proptose, other time the eyeball is in a normal position. That is called intermittent. So, the cause of intermittent proptosis is orbital varix. Okay. Now, once we know this, what is pulsating proptosis and what are the causes? 
Pulsating means there will be pulsations in the proptostyle that is called pulsating proptostyle. What are the causes? First is keratico-cavernous fistula. Okay, so we will learn keratico-cavernous fistula. Then, <clears throat> whenever pulsations can be transmitted from the brain to the eye, isn't it? Due to the defective, why? Because of the defective roof. So, this is your NF1. In NF1, when there are, where is defective roof or in case of fracture roof orbit. So, these are causes of pulsating proptosis. Most common push there, most common will be here CC fistula. Varicose veins in the orbit, Shipra. It is these are varicose veins in the orbit. Yes, MS, it is sphenoid uh, defect which is leading to the roof defect. There can be meningoceles, and that is all leading to your uh, pulsating process. Correct. Okay, so we'll remember both what is intermittent and what is pulsating. Come to the next one. What is the next point? Ganglion cell is second order neuron. Is it correct or not? So many times you all have asked me, so many messages on this. Huh? Are we now clear or not? What is the first order neuron in our visual pathway? All of you answer me this. First order neuron in the visual pathway, we will learn bipolar cells. Are you all clear? Then second order becomes ganglion cell, which is what? Which means what? We are talking about exons of ganglion cell is the optic nerve. So we are talking about optic nerve. And it is the third order neuron is. So this is a debatable question and has been researched nicely. And we will answer this only. Okay. And third order is lateral geniculate body. Third order neuron, lateral geniculate body. Chalo. Now it's clear to you, we come to the next question. Alkali burn is more dangerous than acid burn. 38 number. Is it true? Yes. Why? Because acid coagulates the protein. It coagulates protein and because it coagulates the protein, it will form a layer and the acid cannot go inside the eye. But alkali can very easily go inside the eye and that is why it becomes more dangerous. It will cause more damage. It can penetrate the cornea. Alkali can penetrate the cornea. Please remember this. Okay. Next. Madrosis is loss of eyelash and also loss of eyebrow. Both, it is an overlapping term for both eyelash loss and eyebrow loss. Eyelash loss, again, generally can be due to chronic blepharitis, most common cause. And eyebrow, Eyebrow, you will learn, is leprosy and myxedema. Causes can be leprosy or myxedema. Yes, now you all are answering correctly. Very good. Yes, hypomyxedema and nice, nice. Everybody has answered. Achha, in relation to that few question, this was, uh, I hope you have looked at the image. This dystichiasis image has been asked in your INSCT exam. Okay, this dystichiasis kya tha? Double row of eyelash. This dystichiasis is double row of eyelash. And what is poliosis? Graying of eyelashes. You remember this? Graying of eyelashes. And what is tylosis? Thickening of lid margin. This was also your exam question. Thickening of lid margin. Poliosis kaam padha apne, we have learned in VKH syndrome. It is also seen in Wardenberg syndrome. Chalo, we come to the next point. Headlight and fog appearance is a feature of toxoplasmosis. We, not, we won't forget this. What is headlight and fog? There is intense vitritis. Itni zadev inflammatory cells and there is so much intense vitritis that when we are looking through it, we see these lesions as if I am looking through a fog. This is what is called headlight and fog appearance. So, this is a feature of toxoplasmosis. It is happening due to intense vitritis. And don't forget punched out pigmented lesions. Toxoplasmosis, prefer generally the lesions are on the macula. Okay, tell me one more thing. Where do you get candle wax drippings? I hope you remember that. This is a feature of nothing but thick sheathing of segmental sheathing of periphlebitis. Huh? Whenever there is periphlebitis, there is venous sheathing. This is what is called candle wax drippings. 
It's a feature of all of you? Yes, very nice. Sarcoidosis. It's a feature of sarcoidosis. Take care. Next point. Definitive treatment of angle closure glaucoma is peripheral aridotomy. Now, if they ask you what is the drug of choice to close, to open the angle, or they are asking you drug of choice of angle closure glaucoma. So, then they are not mentioning you the stain, isn't it? So, let us write like this. If they ask you the drug of choice of angle closure glaucoma, we will answer again letanopra. But, okay? And if they ask you drug of choice to open angle, of course, you can open the angle only by constricting the pupil. Our answer is pilocarpy. Definitive treatment, it is peripheral iodotomy by NDR. Iodotomy karte ho, to lens use karte ho, that is Abraham lens. Abraham lens is used to focus the lens, the laser on the iris, which, how much diopter? Plus 66 diopter. Done? And if they ask you what is the treatment of choice of acute congestive glaucoma or acute, now the new name is acute primary angle closure, APAC. Acute primary angle closure is nothing but acute congestive glaucoma. So, what is the treatment of choice? We have to remember pressures are very high. So, because of that, there is iris ischemia. Iris will not react to any drug. Pilo, do, kuch bhi do. So, you have to first decrease the pressure. We start either mannitol or we give acetazolamide. And after that, we will then shift to pilocarpy. Of course, we will give pilo to open the act. But our drug of choice will become first decrease the pressure in this stage. Okay, we come to the next point. The ideal time to operate a congenital cataract, an important question, debatable question, as soon as feasible. Please understand when you say as soon as possible, it is not that immediately when the child is born, you are operating. Right? It is as soon as feasible. Ideally, we wait for one month because the inflammation, if you are operating within one month is so much, even the trabecular meshwork is inflamed. So, wait for a month, but that is also equivalent to as soon as visible only. Na? If you are operating a one month, after one month, uh, you are operating a child so small, isn't it? So, please understand this. So, why we are doing it, you know, na? why we are doing it? Because, all of you, if this is the cavity, you normally what happens? Your fovea is only formed when the light reaches it. And this foveal reflex forms by how much? 5 to 6 months of age. But light has a sensory stimulation. This sensory stimulation through the light is helping the fovea to be formed. So, foveal reflex formation occurs up to what time? 5 to 6 months. Ab kya ho gaya? There is cataract. Ye ho gaya. So, this will not reach and therefore the fovea will not be formed properly and the child will become amblyopic. So, to prevent amblyopia, we have to operate as soon as possible. Compello, goniotomy is a treatment of choice of congenital glaucoma. We are talking about congenital cataract. Koi baat nahi, ye garbar ho jati hai. Thik hai? So, congenital cataract, ab batao, but once you have answered wrong, you will have to answer this. What is the treatment of a child with congenital cataract? You will remove lens aspiration and then you want to put the lens. But because there can be posterior capsular opacification, you will cut in the same sitting the posterior capsule. But vitreous is attached there, so you will cut a little bit of anterior vitreous. Therefore, you learn that treatment of choice here is lens, lens aspiration with primary means. Pehli sitting mein aapne posterior capsulotomy kar di and then going for anterior vitrectomy. This is another important exam question. Okay. We come to the next, 43. The pigments deposited in the nuclear cataract are, you, you realize your mistake, na? No, no message here. Okay. The pigments deposited in nuclear cataract was again important question. Okay. It is melanin and eurochrome. We will remember this. Nuclear cataract, what is the next question? Next question, I put it as a pointer as well. We can take it here only. Second sight, generally second sight means improvement of near glasses why there is improvement we have learned in last session also improvement of near glasses is happening because when there is nuclear cataract and sclerosis it is increasing the refractive index of the lens 
when index will increase overall power of the lens has increased so i need less power and more on my specs so improvement of near glass this is what is second sight of old age or second sight you can say is seen in nuclear cataract Why? because refractive index bad raha hai so what is that index badne se jab power bad raha hai we call it myopic shift it is index myopia myopic shift means going towards more power so it is due to index myopia ठीक है, सो विल रिमेम्बर दिस वन मोर क्वेश्चन है चलो नेक्स्ट पॉइंट टीयर ड्रॉप साइन वी ऑल नो दिस इज अ फीचर ऑफ ब्लू आउट फ्रैक्चर वॉट इज ब्लू आउट फ्रैक्चर फ्रैक्चर फ्लोर ओके वन क्वेश्चन है मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ ब्लू आउट फ्रैक्चर यू शुड आंसर पोस्टीरो मीडियल पार्ट दिस वॉज अ रिसेंट क्वेश्चन गाइज मोस्ट वीकेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द फ्लोर इज पोस्टीरो मीडियल पार्ट एंड देर फोर दिस फ्लोर फ्रैक्चर विल हैपन हेयर ठीक है and if it is associated with a medial wall fracture if it is associated with medial wall fracture now what do you call it uh, what will you get is subcutaneous emphysema isn't it then we will get subcutaneous emphysema okay we come to the next glaucomatocyclotic crisis what is this iska dusra naam hai posner's klosman syndrome padha hai na posner's klosman syndrome so posner's klosman syndrome or glaucomatocyclotic crisis is nothing when this patient the features of uveitis are more or less compared to iop it is less though it is primarily uveitis but iop is so high we generally tend to misdiagnose this patient as acute congestive glaucoma but actually basically problem is uveitis so there is high iop and recurrent uveitis isliye how to treat it we give steroids but under anti glaucoma cover this has been asked okay so steroid should always be under an anti glaucoma cover theek hai this is condition is more common in males and koi exact etiology nahi pata kyun ho rahi hai it is generally it can be genetic it is associated with your uh, h pylori infection okay or with cmv infection just remember these two points This is your glaucomatocyclotic crisis. ठीक है? Okay. Retinoblastoma presents most commonly as we all know most common presentation is leukocoria. Okay. What is the second most common presentation? We will not forget second most common presentation. Will answer is your strabismus or squint. Okay, all of you, answer me this: that what is the most common mode of spread of retinoblastoma? I think yesterday only I got this doubt on my message. So, most common mode of spread is through optic nerve. All of you, we will answer: most common mode of spread is through the optic nerve. ठीक है? And most common non-ocular malignancy, बताओ. In retinoblastoma, we will answer: it is your osteosarcoma. i think through the optic nerve is almost like your through the optic nerve means it's almost like direct only na it is going from the retina retinal tissue to the optic nerve yeah okay next point medox rod test is based on diplopia principle so everyone do you all remember this very important question they can ask you in this exam as well Medox rod is nothing but a plano cylindrical lens in red in color. You are putting in one eye. So suppose the patient is in front of the light. Correct. You have now placed the medox rod in his right eye. So when you place the rod in his right eye, you are placing the rod something like this. Suppose, what will he see? He sees a vertical line with his right eye. And with the left eye, what he sees is a spot of light as usual. So you have created two images by putting the medox rod. and you have created artificial diplopia now these two images cannot fuse isn't it it will be seen differently now you ask the patient what you are looking at if the patient's or eyes are normal the foveal fixations are normal 
he will say that the line is passing through the spot right now if it is your if he says that suppose he says that the line is right side and the spot is on the left side this is his right and this is his left okay so he says the i can see the line right to the spot what does that mean it was the line was already on the right side and he's seeing the line on the right side and the spot on the left side only because maddox rod was on his right eye so you see the line dikh rahi hai so now the line is still on the right side and spot is on the left side only it is uncrossed diplopia so it is isophoria but when he says line is left spot is right so if he says line is left and spot is right now it is a cross diplopia and cross diplopia we will say it means exophoria so we are generally here to diagnose latent squint so here it will be isophoria uncross diplopia and that is exophoria okay so this is what they have asked you you should know how to what is crossed and uncrossed i think i have taught you all make a cross make an arrow we'll never forget that cross diplopia is a feature of divergent squint so it's a feature of divergent squint okay next point <coughs> and isochoria is more at daytime in homes rd pupil you all agree with me homes rd pupil is a mid dilated pupil not able to constrict and if it constricts it re redilatation is again very slow tonic pupil hai na it is happening due to what lesion in the quickly revise with me ciliary ganglion short ciliary nerves so naturally if there is a mid dilated pupil and in day time the other eye will constrict normal eye will constrict therefore an ic choria will be more in the day time in homes rd don't forget that because homes rd is a mid dilated pupil another question how will you confirm it's homes rd <coughs> sorry we go for pilocarpin eye drops very low percentage even with such a low percentage of pilocarpin it is going to constrict right so even if such a low percentage of pilocarpin it is constricting what does it mean it is homes rd because this is happening due to denervation hypersensitivity <coughs> it is due to denervation hypersensitivity okay next we talk about next point now so altitude acha one more point here if the anisocoria is more in the dark what is now the cause batao more in dark instead of daytime if it is more in dark we are talking about horner's syndrome okay right in dark we we want we generally expect a dilatation in a horner's it won't be there will be meiosis okay we come to this one now tell me this altitudinal field defect is a feature of ischemic optic neuropathy we will not forget this it can be arthritic it may be non arthritic it is the altitudinal field defect kya tha where either superior is gone or more commonly inferior is gone this is what is altitudinal field defect again it's a feature of optic nerve disease so this is important come to the next vernal keratoconjunctivitis is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction what are the other hypersensitivity we have to remember so type 1 is vernal what about type 4 reactions in your eye let's revise it one is your eels disease okay then we will not forget disiform keratitis in herpes simplex and third sympathetic ophthalmitis these are all type 4 hypersensitivity even flectanular keratoconjunctivitis type 4 hypersensitivity reactions theek okay? hai and type 3 type 3 will be it can be eels eels mein dono hota hai but we prefer to answer type 4 and second important is stromal keratitis in herpes simplex yeah next point 
Optic nerve gliomas are astrocytomas occurring more commonly in female children. So we will not forget this. Most common type kya hai? Pilocytic astrocytoma. Isn't it? This is one important point. Then second important point, optic nerve gliomas are more commonly associated with neurofibromatosis type 1. And CT scan will show fusiform enlargement of optic nerve. Okay, we will remember these two points. Next, the first line of treatment for diabetic macular edema is intravitreal injections of anti drug. You should know this. When you talk about non-proliferative NPDR, that is NPDR with edema, first line of treatment becomes anti -vegin. But when it is a proliferative diabetic retinopathy, the first line of treatment now will be your, first you will go for PRP, pan-retinal photocoagulation. When it is NPDR, that is with macular edema, now we go for anti vegf agents. Right? You all know about anti vegf Right? That is Bivacizumab, Ranibizumab, Aflibercept. You should be familiar with all these names. A newer one is one is Broclizumab. You know? So you should know this. I'll write the new one. Okay. Yes, very nice. Okay, we come to next point. The wavelength of the femto laser is yes so very important 1.54 femto laser so what is the pulse duration this has been your exam question pulse duration is 10 to the power of minus 15 seconds for femto laser right what is the next thing next you should also remember which laser what is the wavelength of the laser used in your LASIK this was your exam question so we are talking about excimer laser excimer laser ka wavelength batao you will answer it is 193 nm and if you talk about NDR, it is your 1054 nm, 64 sorry, 1064 nm nanometers. So easy to learn, Femto is 1054, NDR is 1064. Which one you are talking about is 562? Photocoagulative lasers. Argon is 514, okay. Argon is 514 nm. And diode which is commonly used is a range of 750, 780 to 850, something like this. Check okay. 780 to 850 nm, right. And it is 532 nm, dark night, that is for your double frequency NDR. Half of 1064 karoge. This is 532 nm. Right. We come to the next point. Salmon patch is a feature of syphilis. So we will not forget that we are talking about interstitial keratitis. It is we are talking about interstitial keratitis. So interstitial keratitis is any keratitis which is only where the stroma is involved. So I hope you all remember this, when there is a patch of bleeding, this is what is salmon patch. And what are the other causes of, apart from syphilis, syphilis mein to milta hai salmon patch. Other causes you should remember, it can be tuberculosis, it can be leprosy. And don't forget Kogan syndrome. What was Kogan syndrome? It is interstitial keratitis with deafness. This is what is Kogan syndrome. Right. We next talk about next point. Frequent change of press biopic glasses is an early feature of. When I say early feature, I am saying intumescent cancer. So what are the three main causes where the glasses change frequently? Please remember with me, I have taught you earlier as well. It can be early cataract, late glaucoma. Okay, so early cataract is intumescent, late stage of primary open angle glaucoma. And what was the third cause? You remember? Diabetes. It is not diabetic cataract. It is diabetes itself. Where if there is hyperglycemia, there will be myopic shift. Okay. And in hypoglycemia, it will be hypometropic shift. Okay. Next point. Pupil in Horners does not dilate with hydroxyamphetamine in postganglionic lesions. 
it was one of your question of this exam therefore i have taken it let's very quickly understand this test that when you are giving cocaine eye drops here what happens so this cocaine is if the pupil dilates this is normal right so <clears throat> because this will be then the your patient is this is a normal pupil not dilate means not dilate means it is your Horner's syndrome this is clear to you all okay so once we know this because this prevents the reuptake of the non-adrenaline there is no non-adrenaline in Horner's therefore it will not dilate that is what cocaine does prevents the reuptake of non-adrenaline okay and then if now you give hydroxyamphetamine. When you give hydroxyamphetamine 1%, what happens? This potentiate the release of non-adrenaline from the synapse, from the cell. So what happens? If it is a preganglionic lesion, if it dilates, then we are saying this is a preganglion. Not dilate means now this is a postganglionic lesion. Bas, itna yaad ro. This much you should remember. Not much will be asked. This much you should know for heart. Simple. I am not complicating it too much. Next point. In retinoscopy done at 1 meter distance, if there is against the movement, this is myopia of more than 1 diameter. So, you have to know this. We have solved this question in our last session. You can go through it, this, that question again. That at 1 meter distance, if it is with the movement, it can be hypermetropia, myopia less than 1 or emetropia. If it is against the movement, it is myopia more than 1. No movement means equal to 1. 1 ka se aaya? 1 meter distance. Correct? So, just remember how we did a very quick revision for you all because some of you are still having phobia with this. So, once I know ki which lens I am getting the point of neutralization. What do I see? Suppose I am getting with the movement. Now, I put some lenses in front of the eye and see with which lens there is no movement. Point of neutralization. Now, the lens by which I could get that point of neutralization is my retinoscopic reading. So, if I write here plus 4, plus 5, this is my basic retinoscopic reading. Where I could get point of neutralization, matlab, pe koi movement nahi ho tha. Now, what you do? You subtract the correction factor. Now, you should know what is correction factor. Distance and cycloplegic. Distance factor, we will remember either 1 meter distance or 2 third of a meter. Pada hai na? Power is inverse of focal length in meters. Apply karo. So, 1 meter matlab 1 will be the correction factor and 2 third means 3 by 2. That is 1.5 will be the correction factor. So, I will subtract this. So, according to at what distance I am doing. And now what cycloplegic I am using? According to that, either I am using atropine or any other cycloplegic. If I am using atropine, again I subtract 1, any other I subtract 0.5. Okay? Now, suppose I tell you my this patient, I did the retinoscopy at 1.5 at 2 third of a meter and I use Tropica Cell Plus. So, my total correction factor becomes 2. I subtract 2 from the reading. My corrected reading will become plus 2 plus 3. Whatever prescription I will give, I will give on the basis of my corrected reading. Okay? I hope this is now clear to you all. How to do the retinoscopy? Okay. Next point. Okay. Do you want to know about how to write the prescription? I think this is absolutely clear to you all. We are in the last of the exam. So, you just take one any value and write a spherical. Plus 2 matlab yaha bhi plus 2, yaha bhi plus 2. But I need one more here. For that, I will use cylinder lens. I need at 180. So, I will write my axis 90. So, remember axis is mentioned opposite. Okay. Now, we come to the next point. Most important factor to keep the cornea in dehydrated state is endothelial pump function. Do you have any doubt on that? No. Ye hai cornea, all around surrounded by water. Still it is dehydrated. How is this possible? It is possible because the endothelial cells are not only acting as a barrier, it is continuously pumping the water back into the aqueous. And this is mainly helping in maintaining the cornea in dehydrated state and therefore transparency of cornea. So, first important thing is normal number of endothelial cells. We have done all that. What you have to more remember? How do you see it? This was your ask. You all should know specular microscopy. Okay, we see both the morphology and number by specular microscopy. What are the other factors to 
promote the dehydrated state co or how to maintain the transparency of cornea it is very simple if this is the you have to understand regular arrangement of epithelium regular arrangement of stroma lamellae how because stroma lamellae are all evenly placed because of the glycosaminoglycans in this which keeps this lamellae all arranged and separated and the distance between the two lamellae is so small that it is less than half the wavelength of light. So, there is no scattering of light. Okay? So, this is asked which gags are present here. Recent question, you will not forget keratin sulfate. Chondrontin sulfate and keratin sulfate are present in the stroma which are helping the stromal fibers to be regularly arranged. And of course, if this is the endothelium, this was the epithelium. So, regular arrangement here, regular arrangement of the stroma and of course, the endothelial pump function, right? Anything else which contributes to transparency? Endothelial pump function, yes. What other thing contributes to transparency is your avascularity of the cornea, isn't it? Normal intraocular pressure, if pressure increases again, there can be edema. All these are contributing to transparency of the cornea. So, this is again a cue, don't forget, keratin sulfate. Chalo, we come to the next point. Four prism adapter is used to diagnose microtropia. I've explained you what is four prism adapter in my last session also. You're putting a base, you're putting a base out prism in front of your one eye. So if this base is out, this eye is going to move in. The other eye has a conjugate movement will come out, but then if the fovea is fine, it will take the fixation back. So if now I know that both fovea are fine, this is what is four prism base out. Test. It is mainly base out prism test. It helps to diagnose microtropia is what? Only 5 degrees of squint is called microtropia. And this was your again Ames question, which it is used to diagnose microtropia. Okay. Next question. The percentage of hereditary cases in retinoblastoma is 40%. So that means non-hereditary kitne hoge? So hereditary is 40% and non-hereditary is 60%. Okay. Now, is hereditary, mein you have to think it can be either familial or non-familial. Isn't it? No family history or with a family history. Okay. Out of the 40%, you just remember like this, 6 to 7% are familial and rest are non-familial. Okay. So, what are sporadic cases and what are family? So, no, sporadic matlab, they are non-familial, non-hereditary. This is what is sporadic. So, sporadic cases are around 94 to 95, 93 to 94% and rest are familial. So, this was also exam question and percentage of hereditary and non-hereditary, this is also exam question. So, I hope you will be able to answer these questions. Okay. Then we talk, this is again a specifically a question of this exam. Circumcorneal neovascularization is observed in deficiency of riboflavin. Okay. We will not forget this. This is riboflavin. Okay. All of you. So once you know about these deficiencies, can we also revise a few more deficiencies? Vitamin A deficiencies. Kya hota hai? Batao. Vitamin A, we all know, vitamin A deficiency will lead to zero ophthalmia. And what if there is a toxicity? Last time we discussed, it will lead to what? Aap kya bologe? Benign intracranial hypertension. Dark Knight, I would like to correct here. I just saw the chart. When you say less than 500 cells, then there cannot be any compensation. Matlab, then the cornea cannot maintain its dehydrated state. It will cause corneal edema. So, this is also important point. But please don't say that this is for donation. For keratoplasty, the minimum number of cells we need is 2000. 1500 to 2000 cells. Okay? Less than 500 cells in the cornea means there will be corneal decompensation. Chalo, vitamin A deficiency ye ho gaya. Now, B12 deficiency will lead to what? Optic neuritis. Isn't it? Let's learn it. B12, B6 deficiency. B6 deficiency is causing gyrate atrophy. You have learned it is a choroidal dystrophy. Gyrate atrophy due to the which enzyme? 
ornithine aminotransferase deficiency of this enzyme so b6 acts as a cofactor of this enzyme okay and of course vitamin uh, c can lead to sub subconjunctival hemorrhaging so we will remember these these are important okay next point smooth muscles of iris develop from neuroectoderm what are smooth muscles of iris we are talking about dilator pupillae we are talking about iris sphincter dilator pupillae and iris sphincter these are the smooth muscles of iris they develop from neuroectoderm now i will just quickly revise with you all what are the things that have been asked from embryology one is lens one is lens we all know lens is from surface ectoderm then they have asked you about corneal stroma and corneal endothelium both you will say all the coverings of the eye you will learn at neural crest okay generally neural crest except some part of the sclera right then they have asked you about your your uh, secondary and tertiary vitreous tertiary vitreous kya hota hai i hope you know zonules of zin so this is again neuroectoderm okay then they have asked you iris epithelium iris and ciliary body epithelium again our answer is neuroectoderm so we won't forget these questions asked in the exam so a uh, pac6 gene is the gene responsible for the whole formation of the eye and what day the eye formation starts 22nd day of gestation ye dono point yaad rakhna theek hai chalo next part pe the strongest attachment of vitreous at the is at the vitreous base where is the vitreous base this is an important question of this exam only so where is the vitreous base near ora serrata we are talking about ora serrata we will not forget this okay we have already talked about floaters and other questions we can move to next one npdr is defined by 4 is to 2 is to 1 rule everybody is clear with what is that if this is your fundus right macular disc now what happens you are to dividing it into four quadrants like so if four kya hai any hemorrhages and microaneurysms microaneurysms in all four quadrant all four quadrants theek hai or looping and beading in two quadrants or irma in one quadrant then you call it severe npdr severe npdr is defined as actually this should be severe npdr there should be a correction here not npdr severe npdr is defined by 4 is to 2 is to 1 now i would add something here what is very severe npdr according to the new classification don't forget more than two of these will be more than one of these criteria will be severe np very severe so very severe npdr kisko bol rahe hain hum log very severe npdr matlab more than one of this criteria is very severe npdr chalo next point posterior lenticonus is a feature of lois syndrome simple and we can also remember what about anterior lenticonus alport syndrome so anterior lenticonus alport syndrome and posterior lenticonus is lois syndrome simple that is oculo cerebro renal other questions on anterior lenticonus are we just discuss oil globule reflex another thing anterior lenticonus may cause syndrome yaad kar lo wardenburg syndrome or kuch more common in males i think this was a pgi question i don't know you should remember this if you ever get struck that alports mein dono ho sakta anterior and posterior now now it is ins et are all together i know that but what we are saying is they can ask you this way that uh, your alports can have both anterior and posterior lenticonus but because anterior lenticonus is most common we will answer so keep this in mind ki ho dono sakta hai in alport but more common is anterior lenticular so they had asked you true about alports is all except and they had asked posterior lenticular anterior so you should know both can be present theek hai yaad rahega okay then we come to the next point chalky white disc and clear disc margin is a feature of you all know this chalky white disc clear disc margin we are talking about primary optic atrophy it's a clear disc margin chalky white in color we are talking about primary optic atrophy 
What was secondary? Quickly revise with me. There is blurred disc margin and dirty white in color is secondary. Secondary will be due to your papillitis and papilledema. Primary is mainly due to the causes like in the brain, mainly like multiple sclerosis, neurosyphilis, or it could be just nutritional optic neuritis or it, neuropathy, right? Or even hereditary neurolabers, hereditary optic neuropathy that can lead to primary. What was the other type? It can be consecutive. Consecutive kisko kehte hai? I hope you know. When it is due to retinal disease, we call it consecutive optic atrophy. And lastly, glaucomatous. The last one is glaucomatous. All the features of glaucoma. Consecutive kaise dikhta hai? You should not forget we are talking about retinitis pigmentosa. It is a pale waxy disc. Okay, we come to the next. 100 day glaucoma is a feature of ischemic CRVO. I hope it's clear to you. It is nothing but the neovascular glaucoma which is seen after 100 day. This was important question. 100 day glaucoma. It's a feature of ischemic CRVO. You don't see it in non-ischemic, isn't it? But yes, in both what else you can see is splash sauce appearance. Let's not forget splash sauce appearance. So splash sauce appearance kya hai? It is multiple flame shaped hemorrhages around the disc. The multiple frame shaped hemorrhage around the disc. Very nicely answered. So, <clears throat> I think this is very simple. We all know roseate ring is a feature of blunt trauma. It's imprint of pigment on the anterior capsule of the lens. What are the other features of blunt trauma apart, apart from this? Other features of blunt trauma apart from the vosius ring, kya bologe? I hope you all remember rosate shaped cataract. Rosate shaped cataract starts from, this is another question, we will answer it starts from posterior cortex. And of course, vosius ring. What else? Berlin's edema, we also call it commotio retin. What else? At your level, you should also know your angle recession glaucoma. You can also learn angle recession glaucoma. Correct? Next. Most common ocular feature of mumps is, please remember, dacryocystoadenitis. Both gland and sac are inflamed. And if I ask you for measles, what is the most common ocular feature? You should answer vitamin A deficiency. Measles, it is vitamin A deficiency. Okay, next point. The criteria for safe strategy is prevalence of TF, that is trachoma follicle of more than 10%. You all know what is safe strategy. Even recently, I think last year only this has been asked in NSH. Safe strategy is a WHO program to control trachoma in a community. S is surgery, then antibiotics, facial hygiene, environmental cleanliness. Right? And with surgery, we are talking about trachea cyst surgery. Which antibiotics? Either oral azithromycin or topical tetracycline. Which one will you prefer? Oral azithromycin. Okay, guys. When will you start in any area? Will depend prevalence of trachoma follicles. Matlab stage 1 of histostaging. So, wo prevalence should be more than 10%. And if it is between 5% to 10% in that area, more than 10% you are following safe strategy. Done. What if it is between 5 to 10%? Then we go for FNE. And less than 5%, we don't do anything under this program. Facial hygiene and environmental cleanliness to misha hona chahi na. But under this program, nothing is done if it is less than 5%. Yes, very nice. Good. We come to the next point. OK drum test is used to test functional blindness. You understand this? A person is pretending I'm blind, but actually he's not. And a malingering. How do you do it? OK drum test. You're talking to the patient, when he looks at the drum, if his vision is fine, I can see optokinetic nystagmus in his eyes. This is how I will catch his malingering. What is the other use? Don't forget visual, vision assessment or visual equity assessment, not exact equity can not be assessed, but vision assessment in infants. If you want to know whether they can see anything or not, we can go for OK drum test. Show this drum rotating drive to the infant and try to see optokinetic nystagmus in the child's eye. Okay? And what is optokinetic nystagmus? This is saccadic and persuade movements. Don't forget this. 
Pursuit movement means slow following movement. Saccadic is reflex. So this has been asked in the exam. Saccadic movements are fast movements to reflex the object on the phobia. Pursuits are slow following movements. Chal, next point. Pupillary reactions are normal in cortical blindness. I just explained it to you when I was talking about Wernicke. So, optic radiation lesion and cortical lesion, pupillary reactions are normal. Let's not forget this. Because pupillary light reflex pathway, usse pehle hi, it goes to pretectal nucleus. Yeah. Next point, lacquer cracks are a feature of pathological myopia. Do you remember what are lacquer cracks? Break in the Brooks membrane, isn't it? What are the other features of pathological myopia? Very quickly, if you all can draw with me, one is your annular crescent. What has we learned for pathological myopia apart from annular crescent? So, this is some atrophic area around this. This is annular crescent. There can be pigment and bleeding in the macular area. And this is what is called foster fuge spots. These are foster fuge spots. Again, exam question. What else? I hope you all remember. Lattice degeneration at the periphery, which can keep degenerating and lead to hole formation. Any hole formation will cause regmatogenous retinal detachment. We cannot forget tessellated fundus, where the choroidal blood vessels are more prominent. Okay? Or kya lacquer cracks kya padhamne? Break in the Brooks membrane. These are lacquer cracks. These are more white in color. I am drawing it as red, but actually they are. Let me draw with this one. They are more like this, we will draw like this. Okay, lacquer cracks. Are we leaving some more point about pathological myopia? We just read it. Posterior stephyloma. Don't forget that. Okay. What is the break in the Brooks membrane apart from lacquer cracks? Is there any condition? Angioid streaks. Angioid streaks are also break in the Brooks membrane, which are seen due to collagenous disorders. Typically, you see radiating lines of this break around the lens. This is what is angioid streaks. Okay, what are the causes of angioid streaks? Very interesting mnemonic, Pepsi. Kya kya hota hai? Pepsi mein. Most common is pseudoxanthoma elasticum. We will learn pseudoxanthoma elasticum. What is E? Ehlerden loss. What is another P? Paget's disease of the bone. Okay, Paget's disease. Then sickle cell anemia and idiopathic. I for idiopathic. Okay, so just remember most common cause of angioid is pseudoxanthoma elastic. Yeah. Okay, we come to the next. Purkinje images absent in a fakia are 3 and 4. So everybody is, remembers now what are the Purkinje images? 1 and 2. Behind the in front of the cornea, 3 and 4. In front of lens, behind the lens. Another thing, which image is inverted? If they ask you, it is the fourth which is inverted. Don't forget that. How many images are there in pseudo fakia? If they ask you, all four. And in mature cataract, fourth is absent. Just remember this much. Next point. The most common complication of heart therapy is, you know what is heart? Highly active antiretroviral therapy. So, you are treating this patient of HIV, you have given the heart therapy, immunity becomes better. So, what will happen? Inflammation will happen. Therefore, there is uveitis. What do you call this uveitis? Immune recovery uveitis. Most commonly it is, though it can involve anterior, intermediate and posterior uvea, most commonly it is posterior uveitis. Prominent feature is vitritis. Don't forget this. It is non-granulomatous uveitis. And another point that you can remember is, is what is the most common ocular feature of HIV? Then should answer microangiopathy, where you get cotton wool spots. Okay, you will not forget cotton wool spots. Chalo, next. HM4 is responsible for nuclear cataract, correct? Please remember, yes. Insoluble proteins, high molecular weight protein, HM3, HM4. This was again your INICT question. Both are responsible for, they are insoluble, responsible for cataract formation. 
HM4 particularly for nuclear cap. 1 and 2 will not cause cat, right? 3 and 4 will cause cat. Remember that. Okay. Next question. Eight, next point. 8 and a half syndrome is, we all know what is 1 and a half syndrome. Explained to you in so many sessions. So, we all know one-sided PAPRF as well as same side MLF gone. Aki side ki PPRF which is the horizontal gaze center and MLF gone is one and a half syndrome where one side both adduction abduction will go and other side only adduction. So if you are confused let us quickly revise this is the horizontal gaze center suppose of the right side. It is going to manage the lateral rectus of right side and opposite side it will order the medial longitudinal fasciculus and that will order the left sided medial rectus. It is so simple. So, when one side PPRF is gone, no abduction, no adduction. Ye chala gaya, hai na? But if this side even MLF is gone, then no adduction also on this side. So, no abduction, no adduction is one and they half. This is what you have to learn. One sided PPRF lesion and MLF lesion leads to one and a half. Now, if same sided seventh nerve is involved, same side 7 nerve palsy, this is called 8 and a half syndrome. Okay, next point. Amsler sign is a feature of, you all know what is Amsler sign. You are taking out a little bit of equus, you do a paracentesis, there is bleeding on the opposite angle, this is what is Amsler sign. Itna iris atrophy here, there is exposed blood vessels in the iris, there are some new blood vessels that are there, there are abnormal blood vessels in the angle. So, all these will bleed on parasynthesis. Okay? So, we will remember this is a feature of fused heterochromic cyclitis. So, fused heterochromic cyclitis, we will also learn a few more features with this diagram. What you get, I hope you are making the diagram with me. These are stelate KPs. Okay? There is heterochromia iridis. There is lot of iris atrophy. You know? Diffuse iris atrophy, no posterior synechia and therefore no role of the normal treatment that is steroids and cycloplegics. No role of steroids and cycloplegics. Okay, next. Uveitis in JRA is also called white uveitis. You know why? Because it's an atypical anterior uveitis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis may there is no pain, no redness, no photophobia, no blepharospasm. That is why eye is white and therefore you call it white uveitis. We will not forget this. What type of uveitis? Non-granulomatous anterior uveitis. Okay, next. Blind spot is an absolute negative scotoma. I hope you know absolute means in any condition we can't see in this area. Negative means there is no black patch. It's just a hollow. Okay, so absolute negative scotoma. Remember, in optic nerve lesions, therefore, you will always get negative scotoma. In macular lesions, we all, koi bhi macular pathology hai, we always get a black patch, that is a positive scotoma. Chalo, next. Superior orbital fissure syndrome involves 3, 4 and 6 nerve. So, all the nerves which are passing through the superior orbital fissure. That definitely that will be involved. I hope you remember that diagram of superior vital fissure. This is your annulus of zin. What are the nerves passing? LFT are passing outside the zin. This is the mnemonic to learn lacrimal frontal trochlear. And a trochlear is your fourth nerve. And two branches of third nerve, nasociliary and sixth nerve. So three and six are here. This is the third superior branch, inferior branch, nasociliary and sixth nerve. So, all 3, 4 and 6 will be involved. Now, we will also remember this. If there is involvement of the optic nerve also, if through the optic foramen this is coming, then we call it orbital apex syndrome. What is orbital apex syndrome? When even the optic nerve is involved. Chalo, next point. Triad of RP is, this is very important question, pale wax hitters, catenated arteries, bony spicules. I think you all know that, isn't it? Okay, so, we will learn a few more questions on retinitis pigmentosa. So, first answer was the triad, we have done that, that is pale wax hitters. What type of atrophy we learned? It's a consecutive optic atrophy. So, pale wax hitters 
attenuated arteries and bony spicules. So, the spicules are pigmentary disturbance in form of bony spicules. You know this. What is the next question? Next question they will ask you is your field effect. So, I hope you all remember early case you get a ring scotoma initially because it involves mid periphery and late stage part chuke hum log last session mein tunnel vision or tubular vision. We will not forget this. Next question, most common systemic association, Usher's syndrome. What is Usher's? You will learn RP with deafness is Usher's. So, most common systemic association, Usher's syndrome. Right? And I think this was your AIMS question only. Docosa hexenoic acid supplements are given to slow the progress of retinitis pigmentosa. So, we will not forget this. Okay? Docosa hexenoic acid. So, we do not have any definite treatment. These are the things we have in hand. Acid is given to slow the progress. Okay, done? Okay, we come to the next. Normal CD ratio is less than equal to 0.3. So, whenever they ask you the normal CD ratio, cup disc ratio should be answered at this only. But there is another thing you have to understand. We start suspecting glaucoma when the CD ratio goes more than. So, in your latest edition, it is written 0.7. So, it can be 0.6 is also correct, 0.7 is. So, these two different statements are, please try to appreciate it. Okay? I just took this point to convey this message. So, I will start suspecting glaucoma and will more alert if I see a CD ratio of more than 0.6 or 0.7. Okay, so dark night, it is not exactly uh, even confirmed that it will help too much in uh, uh, treating the retinitis pigmentosa, but docosa hexenoic acid, ek cheez ho rekna, shayad progress ko roke, even that is not 100% proof. So, actually docosa hexenoic is a normal constituent in your rod. Yeah. Next. So, there is a pupillary sparing in diabetic third nerve palsy. Everybody remembers this point. So, if it is a diabetic third nerve, so if you talk about third nerve, on the surface are the pupillary fibers. Okay, a simple hair diagram from my side. Pupillary fibers are supplied by pile blood vessels. So, any uh, space, any compression through any lesion, any tumor, it is the pile blood vessels which are affected. Therefore, pupillary fibers will be affected. But what happens? The core is supplied by vasa vesorum. Now, because this is supplied by vasa vesorum, in all the medical causes diabetes, hypertension, this is involved. Therefore, pupillary reactions are normal. They are spared. Okay? So, remember this. Or kya hota hai? Agar pile blood vessels affected hai, and there is continuous irritation on the pupillary fibers, initially there is a constriction of the iris sphincter, meiosis. Now, if this continues, there will be damage of the pupillary fibers. Ab kya hoga? There will be med mediastis. So, meiosis followed by mediastis. This is what is called Hutchison's pupil. Okay? So, meiosis followed by mediastis is what is called Hutchison's pupil. Done? Chal. Next part there. So, these points you will remember. Okay, good. We come to the next. Ishihara chart has been asked so many times frequently in your this, even in innocent exams. So, it's, you have to remember it is the chart which is used for color, screening color blindness. Which color blindness? Only red green. Okay, first important point. Minimum, at least the patient should have a vision of 6 by 18. And if he is a child, okay. Okay, so, you have to remember that. This is the one point that you will remember, but suppose that the, the, there, is, there is a child and he cannot read your this, then what do you do? What is the next chart? I just want to give you a new name. If this is a child and he cannot read the numbers, what is written in your Zihara chart? So that is Zihara chart. Okay, so that is just. Uh, in that case, just remember. What is the name? That is Hadi Rand Rittler. 
ठीक है जस्ट स्लिप फ्रॉम माई माइंड यस सो इट इज हार्डी रैंड लेटर दिस इज अगेन अ चार्ट वेयर यू यू कैन यूज इट फॉर सेम बेस्ड ऑन सेम इज यारा एंड यू कैन यूज इट फॉर योर क्या कहते हैं फॉर स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन so dark like this is what you have to know from my side from my point of view that when you talk about the pupil size even if i am talking about pontine hemorrhages or you, you have to just remember that initially uh, maybe you have learned even more in detail in your neurosurgery and neurology but what here you have to remember if it is a medical cause the core is involved the superficial fibers are not involved therefore pupil is sparing if it is a surgical cause means space occupying lesions hemorrhages and so on now it is the hutchinson's pupil which i just described initially there is meiosis followed by vitreous theek hai okay next point so this is very very important this is the core and basic of glaucoma and i hope everybody remembers this that if you talk about how all the nerve fibers aggregate on the optic disc if this is your retina the nerve fibers aggregate kaise karte hain sabko pata hai this is the macula fibers from here will travel straight from the nasal part again it is traveling straight these are called superior radiating fibers these are inferior radiating fibers lekin jo temporal side it curves and then enters and this is what are arcuate fibers and first damage because it occurs in arcuate fibers and therefore i just talked about germs area therefore first photoma will occur in germs area so please remember that first damage is always in arcuate fibers right and this is also one of the reason why the cupping in glaucoma is first vertically oval because the arcuate fibers are entering from above and below yeah next next point vortex keratopathy is deposition of the drug in a whorl like manner we all know vortex keratopathy correct we also call it cornea verticillata so when the the drug is deposited in a whorl like manner like this chalo very quickly this was your again your nct question what are the causes we will learn chloroquine then amiodarone very important theek hai then tamoxifen then fabry's disease then indomethacin hope you are writing with me theek hai all these okay and they had asked you all cause this except so in except may answer tha chlorpromazine why not chlorpromazine because this is mainly deposited on the endothelium this is endothelial deposit not epithelium theek hai and which anti glaucoma can cause this we will put in the list nitarsodel don't forget this right okay next point next point is oil globule reflex is a feature of ye ho chuka hai i think we can move further very quickly okay satellite nodules are a feature of fungal keratitis what are the other things they have asked you about this keratomycosis is again a favorite topic in inict keratomycosis what are the things i'll just point it out first question how does it happen trauma by vegetable matter theek hai by vegetative matter this is one important point we all know that this is a history of trauma by dandi se chot lag gayi patti twig or a leaf so this is one thing second what is the most common fungus most common is aspergillus fumigatus and if this is not given the next best option is fusarium so aspergillus fumigatus or fusarium theek hai okay we come to the next next question was about satellite nodules we should know this next question again about unsterile hypopion one of you have asked me just now only about this so you can see the fungus inside the hypopion unsterile ulcer has dry rough look okay next question drug of choice natamycin don't forget natamycin this has been asked twice or thrice one more thing silver silver sulfadiazine which is used generally in the burns is also an anti fungal and this question was also asked previously okay we will remember silver sulfadiazine theek hai okay we come to the next 91 pathognomic feature of complicated cataract is okay so everybody knows we are talking about polychromatic acha yes very nice 
dark night we have pointed out correctly signs are more than symptoms in keratomycosis when we are comparing this with bacterial keratitis okay come to this point so polychromatic lecture is one important thing so you will not answer breadcrumb appearance as polypathognomic it can be asked as an option Another point question, of course, bed comp appearance and it is most commonly posterior subcapsular. We have just learned this as well. Okay? So, it can be anterior segment or posterior segment disease, but most commonly after long term, long -term uveitis. Okay, next we talk about. Next point is telecanthus is, this is again a very important INICT question. How do you differentiate telecanthus from hypertellurism? So, in telecanthus, the interpupillary distance is normal. It is only a soft tissue problem, long medial canthal becomes. And when you talk about hypertellurism, what is hypertellurism? Two medial walls are far apart, broad nasal bridge. When two medial walls far apart, hai, then what you get is the interpupillary distance will be more. So, you will learn a hypertellurism, matlab, interpupillary distance is more. So, it is an important question. Keep this in mind. Okay? Jitne bhi cranial deformities holte hai na. So, usme hypertellurism aapko milega. Trika Collins, Golden Harv, you can get this. And what about in telecanthus? Kaha padha hai? Where did we learn telecanthus? We have learned telecanthus in blepharophimosis syndrome. Right? We have learned telecanthus also in Wardenberg syndrome. So, blepharophimosis syndrome and Wardenberg syndrome. Remember Wardenberg, na? white frontal locks, joint eyebrows, sinopheres, vestibular dysfunction. Okay. Okay, next. Cotscrew conjunctival blood vessels are seen in carotico cavernous fistula. These are dilated conjunctival blood vessels because episcleral pressure will be more. Kaise? Think with me. All the venous drain is going into the cavernous sinuses. Now, cavernous sinus may enter internal carotid artery or cavernous sinus ke beech, if there is a fistula, pressure will be more venous pressure. More venous pressure means you are getting, what are the features? If there is more venous pressure, we are getting pulsating proptosis, first problem. And what is the typical triad of a uh, CC fistula, direct and indirect, two types of, okay, so you can get this, you will get a lot of congestion and chemosis. You can get whooshing sound in the eye, right? And apart from that, due to the increased episcleral venous pressure, I am getting glaucoma. The patient has glaucoma. He has venous stasis retinopathy. And we will not forget these corkscrew vessels in the conjunctival corkscrew vessels. These are some terms we will not forget. Okay? So, Direct is mainly due to trauma between internal carotid artery and cavernous sinus. Whereas indirect, it is mainly between the branches. So, you generally get almost the same features but in a milder form in indirect. Next point. The first symptom of sympathetic ophthalmitis is difficulty in near vision. Very important question. Many of you answer photophobia which is wrong. It can be a part of the option so be alert. So, what are the questions of sympathetic ophthalmitis? Important topic. Very first important thing, perforating injury in one eye is causing uveitis in the other eye. Kitni der injury ke baad hoga? Are not before two weeks because it takes this much time for immune reaction to happen. Correct? It is mainly autoimmune reaction towards uveal antigen. One name of the antigen is retinal S. These are all in the pigmented tissue. You can get this antigen. They have not asked you about the name of the antigen. What they have asked you is this, number one. They have asked you, kab hoga? They have asked you about first sign. First sign is retrolental flare. And what is the first symptom? I just told you, first symptom is your decreased. Why? Kuch socha na? Think with me, you will never forget. If the first sign is here, look at the diagram. It is here, na? Retrolental means behind the lens. So, this is all ciliary body area. Ciliary muscles mainly will be affected. This ka kaam kya hai? Accommodation. So, there is a decreased accommodation and therefore difficulty in near vision. Okay, na? Simple. So, this is your, these are the questions. And yes, they have asked you one more question here. Dalen fuch nodules, which are seen between the retina and Brooks membrane. Don't forget about this. Okay. 
So that was sympathetic. And yes, do you remember? I just taught you it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So these are some points regarding sympathetic ophthalmitis. Okay. Which is the next? DVD is a feature. Ye ho gaya? It does not obey Herring's law. Bata diya. Thik hai? One more question which is your exam question. So we will uh, mention here. Infantile esotropia mein milega latent nystagmus. We will not forget this. They, this has been asked. Latent nystagmus mein kya hai? If you close one eye of the patient, cover one eye I mean to say, so you will get, you will see that there is nystagmus. Once you don't cover it, you don't see the nystagmus. So it is hidden. So when you are breaking the fusional reflex, then you see the nystagmus. That is what is latent nystagmus. And what type of nystagmus we saw in MLF lesion that is internuclear ophthalmoplegia? You remember that? Ataxic. Okay, very quickly, ataxic nystagmus in INO, they have asked you. Latent in infantile, they have asked you. Then downbeat nystagmus mainly in Arnold Carey malformations. This is asked in the exam. Arnold Carey malformations. Okay, this is also Seesaw nystagmus kya hai? This is seen in central chiasmal lesions. This is also exam question. Then they have asked you about your optokinetic which I, we have already done. Optokinetic nystagmus is physiological, not pathological. Okay? Okay, so these are few questions around this. Next. What is the most common ocular feature of NF1? It is leash nodule. Kya Okay. If most common ocular feature of NF1 is leash nodules, then what is the most common ocular feature of NF2? This has also been your exam question. If you say NF2, you will answer NF2 may, this is your, yes, presenile posterior subcapsular cat. It is presenile posterior subcapsular cat. Yes, very good. It's uh, I, I, I will also add this point, Dark Knight, that sympathetic ophthalmitis is a granulomatous pan uveitis. Okay, it's a granulomatous pan uveitis. <coughs> what are the other features of NF1 that you have to know? Did, did we also not learn that optic nerve glioma? is more common in patients of NF1. So you can learn the ocular feature of NF1 by a very interesting mnemonic, ocular. Okay, where O is your optic nerve glioma, right? C for cornea. What do you get in the cornea in NF1? Thickening of corneal nerves. Okay, thickened corneal nerves. What is the other cause of thickened corneal nerves? Leprosy, don't forget that. Then U is your uveal tissue where you get leash nodule. What do you get in the lids? L is for lids. We get neurofibroma, S-shaped deformity of the lid if you remember. What do you get in the angle? We can get glaucoma. And in retina, we can get astrocytomas and choroidal nevus. This is all about your ocular features of NF. Chalo. Next point, buddy. Inverse glaucoma is glaucoma which is treated by a midriatic. Am I clear what I just said? So, what is inverse glaucoma? We generally learned in relation to malignant glaucoma, which is also called aqueous misdirection syndrome, where aqueous instead of going anteriorly, it starts collecting in the vitreous cavity because of the ciliary block. So, we also call it ciliary block glaucoma. Why does it happen? This can happen after any intraocular surgery. And what do you do about it? Now you want to dilate the pupil. What happens? It dilates the ciliary ring and the block opens because the serial lenticular touch gets disturbed. So you are using atropine as a treatment in this condition. So please remember malignant doesn't mean related to anything with the malignancy. It means difficult to treat. So we also call this ciliary block glaucoma or we are calling it what else we call? We call also call it aqueous misdirection syndrome. So when you give atrophy, can you think of any other uh, inverse? So this is the reason we are calling it inverse because normally 
you are treating glaucoma with pilocarpine and here we are treating it with atropine so can you think of any other condition where you give atropine to treat just learn with me inverse glaucoma ka ek aur condition yaad rakho spherophakia this was asked in your exam spherical lens can cause a pupillary block if you dilate the pupil it it will solve the problem okay so spherophakia this additional point you can note down okay we come to the so this is already done chalo next visual field in papilledema is enlargement of blind spot is it uh, okay so papilledema what are the questions asked you all know it is edema around the disc when it is due to increased intracranial te tension we call it papilledema but if it is just due to other causes you call it disc edema first of all secondly what is the first sign whenever they ask you again it's debatable so i am mentioning here you will answer venous dilatation first sign aapko kya answer karna hai venous dilatation baad mein hoga blurring of disc margin is the second thing which will happen then they have asked you about field defect which is and why field defect this common sense this is a blind spot is optic disc is a blind spot on the field chart now there is edema around the disc so what what do you get here enlargement of blind spot this is not enough what they will ask you in ini ct is they have asked you and we will revise what are the other causes you can think about for enlargement of blind spot so enlargement of blind spot uh, whether there should be something around the disc which is causing it think yourself myelinated nerve fibers which is again a developmental problem myelinated nerve fiber they should stop the myelination stops at lamina cribosa it should not come inside into the fundus but here if it, if it does it can be leading to enlargement of blind spot then what else we can think about is your drusen okay apart from papilledema and this we will learn these can be some causes of enlargement of blind spot drusens are again deposits disc drusens disc drusens means these are deposits on the disc correct okay okay nidhi what you will do you will dm me we will just find a solution of it first breathe deep relax let's listen to the last point this is the 100 point okay nidhi and then you will dm me and i am going to tell you what you have to do so first of all breathe relax smile yes come to the last point so what is the 100th one the most important factor to focus light rays on the retina is curvature of the cornea i went back to the basic is it correct do you realize it what are the two things that you have to understand here i'll i, I can i rub this one hmm. i'll just rub this to explain you something here there was an interesting question in your nict or aims question that's why i have put this point here the question was that what will happen listen very carefully it's an interesting question nidhi what will happen if a patient why a person person's vision is not clear when he is swimming under water theek hai chalo if you don't know swimming or you're not swimming, you should all know swimming anyway it's life saving but even if you don't know think like this when you wash your face water enters your eyes your vision is not clear why everyone medical non medical whoever is listening should know this ऐसा क्यों होता है तो ये पूरा बेसिक्स इज द लास्ट पॉइंट दैट व्हेन द व्हाट आर द फैक्टर्स व्हिच आर हेल्पिंग इन बेंडिंग ऑफ लाइट रेस एंड फोकसिंग योर लाइट रेस ऑन द रेटिना वन इज बिकॉज व्हाट हैपेंस द रिफ्रैक्शन इज हैपनिंग एट द कॉर्निया एंड द लेंस एंड इट इज फोकस एट द पॉइंट बिहाइंड द लेंस आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू हियर द इमेज गेट्स इनवर्टेड द सेम इनवर्टेड इमेज इज फॉलोइंग ऑन द रेटिना व्हेन आई कम टू रिफ्रैक्शन व्हाट आर द मेजर रिफ्रैक्टिंग सरफेस कॉर्निया एंड लेंस now why corn which is more where is the refraction more it is in the cornea what are the factors why it is more in the cornea first most important is curvature more the curvature more refractive part this is what you are learning as most important factor okay it is most to focus light rays on retina is curvature of the cornea but what is the second point difference of refractive index between the two eyes अब क्या होता है ये यहाँ पे एयर है दिस इज योर एक्वेस ह्यूमर वाटर बिकॉज ऑफ द डिफरेंस देर इज मोर बेंडिंग दैट इज वाई रिफ्रैक्शन इज मोर एट द कॉर्निया नाउ व्हेन यू आर स्विमिंग अंडर वाटर योर मीडिया बिकम्स वाटर एंड वाटर 
when your media becomes water and water there will be less bending so answer of your question was in the water there is loss of refraction okay so what did we learn main factor curvature second factor difference of refractive index most important puchega curvature but both are contributing to refraction at the core when you are under water this is there is no difference there is loss of okay so dark night i i think ek to dark night rakhne ke badle why don't you keep your name as light pleasant morning something something different why dark night it's very frightening na mujhe tumse dar lagta hai ha yes refractive index answer tum sab sahi dete ho okay avinash that's cool but don't do that i'll i'll tell you better way drugs don't help okay so अच्छा किस में एम ए ऑप्टिक नर्व हाइपोप्लेजिया अगर होगा ऑप्टिक डिस्क हाइपोप्लेजिया सो वॉट हैपन्स दैट द ऑप्टिक डिस्क साइज इज स्मॉल ठीक है सो इफ द ऑप्टिक डिस्क साइज इज स्मॉल यू वोट गेट एनलार्जमेंट ऑफ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट द साइज ऑफ ब्लाइंड स्पॉट विल बी लेसर ऑपोजिट हो जाएगा ओके एंड गोनियोस्कोपी डार्क नाइट द गोनियोस्कोपी में वॉट यू आर डूइंग बिकॉज द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ एयर इज वन i just explain this in this session only i think you joined late so normally the la you cannot see the angle structures because of total internal reflection inside this anterior chamber now what happens because of the refractive because this is becomes a denser media and air is a lighter media when the light goes from light to dense what happens if the critical angle of we were talking about critical angle ki jab bhi usse zyada agar angle of incidence hota hai there is total internal reflection ye to theek hai now when you put a gonio lens refractive index is more that becomes a denser media no internal reflection so now i can see the angle structure this is the basis of gonioscopy theek hai are koi bhi film ho naam sunne mein to ajeeb lag raha hai na positive naam rakho pleasant naam rakho batman aur superman ke tum log babu sumar se nikloge nahi kya karo <laughs> okay Anyway, it's okay. Nikal na vinche. You should keep enjoying it. Okay, Nadeem, what's your question? Okay, no questions. Any questions? So we are already at the hundredth point. If you don't have a question, Nidhi and everyone, let us share some very important thought for the day. But for one second, I'll wait for the questions, if any. Are there any questions, or should we end? okay so our last so as a protocol of my class i am going to discuss a thought for the day to charge you all up so all of you let's learn it together emi hornus ka question ye tha which one hydroxy amphetamine if it does not dilate it is post ganglionic lesion if it dilates it's a pre ganglionic lesion hydroxy amphetamine is doing what it is mainly potentiating the release of this okay so okay let, let's now yashwant there is no you should never do that medico should never be afraid of exams we are only living in exams only ha huh? so when you are fearful you will just just affect your performance so you have to be lions very very fearless focus no time to even have fear and think about anything you just continuously studying focus have your aims have your targets let's see what i have written what i got few lines here so let's read it together when you think i can't do any more nidhi yashwant i need a break that is precisely the time to challenge yourself to keep going so i'm paraphrasing one of the very renowned world philosopher daisy kurkeda so he says that it is the precisely the time to challenge yourself to keep going okay those who persevere and remain undefeated will win and how to remain undefeated by not stopping even if you are going slow keep going slow no fears no doubt so this is a time to run faster now this i have written and you have to run fight harder okay so all the best all of you and nidhi please dm me i i think i'll try to help you okay anything else i'm still waiting
थैंक यू थैंक यू डार्क नाइट आई गोइंग टू चेंज योर नेम फॉर द नेक्स्ट टाइम जीरो जीरो सेवन लगा दे साथ में जेम्स बॉन्ड के आज आइडिया अच्छा है ना ओके सो आई थिंक वी विल एंड हेयर थैंक यू सो मच Stay blessed all of you be fighters keep moving keep studying keep your focus okay all the best lot of blessings to all of you